Welcome everybody to Cards Open 11. I am joined by Spooze, Bubbles, and Darkness. We're going to break down all the action here in the pregame show in the War Room because it's it's been a pretty incredible time for cards over the last few weeks. We've had the OCC. We just had the two-year anniversary. We have the uh, mobile beta testing going on. There is a lot happening in the cards world. And in this next hour, we're going to break it all down for you. And we're going to get you ready for the top four of Cards Open 11. Now, we had 204 players compete over two weekends to end up with our top 16. They competed yesterday, and we have our top four ready to go today. Let's dive into the bracket and take a quick look at who we have competing later today. As you can see, we've got some familiar names on both sides of the bracket. Folks like Darkness, like Bubbles who are joining me today. We've got the J-Kings, we've got the Vinnies of the world, but on the left side of the bracket, competing for the $1,500 prize pool, we have relative newcomer Noro, who Bubbles has done his best Sherlock Holmes impression and dug up the dirt on, so we'll get to that in a moment. Taking on No in 5, they're going to be going into the finals to take on the winner of Artemisia versus Tang Tang. So we have three very well-known players. We have one relative newcomer, and all of them had a really, really tough path to get to this top four. As we get ready for the action, uh, Bubbles, as I mentioned, you had done a little bit of digging. You had come up with a little bit of a, a history lesson regarding our, our new friend, Nora. Why don't you walk us through exactly who this new friend is? Yeah, so Nora reigns from China, like our other top three competitors today. and. They, you know, the Chinese community has been absolutely killing it in cards for a long time. Uh, and Nuru is, you know, a, a new person to the scene, but no exception. Um, so they've been playing cards for about half a year now. Uh, they they have played other CCGs before. They played Hearthstone and that sort of stuff before. So they're experienced in CCGs, but still very new to cards. Um, and, and for anyone saying, you know, sure, they've only been playing it half a year, but they must have paid their way to the top and sort of, you know, just lucked it out. They are completely free to play. I have a from word from the devs that they have not paid any money into their account. So they're half a year, brand new account, free to play, and they're already top four at cards open, which I think is really impressive in itself. Um, just to give a little bit of sort of backstory about who they are and what sort of stuff they like. They Their favorite is USA by quite a long shot. They, they think it's really powerful. They really enjoy it. And, and we see that in their, in their decks today. They have this USA Poland deck, which everyone's been running. Um, but I did hear that they found it a little bit disappointing. Maybe they prefer the USA Germany and this sort of stuff. Um, and and they, they think the aggressive playstyle is very powerful in cards, which I think we all agree with. I, I think aggro is, is very strong in cards at the moment. I think my bird certainly agrees. Um, and I may have to hand it back for now because he, he's getting all excited. Well, well, thank you for that investigative reporting, Bubbles. Always appreciate getting some details on some of the new players. Ollie, who will be joining us for the cast of Open 11, is uh, obviously a big fan of having these Opens be a great place for new players to come and kind of cut their teeth on the competitive side of cards. So I know he'll be happy with that. While we continue to dive into, you know, the whole experience of Cards Open, it's a bit unique, a bit different from the OCCs where you have two weekends to qualify. And Darkness, you went ahead and actually won one of those weekends. You and, and Team Ammo teammate Jay King came uh, one and two, I believe. What was your experience like going through that first qualification weekend? First qualification weekend is now already six weeks uh, away. So my, my memory is shifting away. Um, there, I, I met some completely new pe persons, but most most interesting part for me here in, in comparison is that the meta completely changed. Uh, be before, I was still sticking to control decks, to, to the regular tournament decks, and in the meantime, uh, especially with the last patch, uh, the... The German Brit aggro deck is is new to the meta. The combined arms deck. We will going deeper into that later. And well, a lot of 
stacks are similar. For example, Brit Air was very powerful before, is still powerful. Legions are still on the run. Uh, previously, no one was playing J Aggro, and you could easily tech against Aggro lineups, ban Brit, and beat J Aggro. But now something changed, and Aggro is very, very dominant. This is one of the reasons I'm sitting here today instead of playing. And this is the reason for uh, the competitor bringing all the same lineup. And I, I think you talk, touched on a really great point there because the lineups are all very similar. And we're going to dive into that in just a moment. But Darkness, you mentioned you know that qualification weekend was a few weeks back. But Bubbles, you did actually play yesterday. Unfortunately for you, it didn't maybe go as you had planned. Fortunate for us, you're able to join us here. So I won't lie that I'm a bit happy about it. Uh, why, don't, why don't you talk me through a little bit around what happened yesterday and kind of what that leads to in the way of expectations for today? So before I get onto that, I'd like to, to pick a bone real quick. I've got a slight bone to pick, which is you mentioned Darkness, first place. Excellent. J King, second place. And then you skipped who was in third place. Which was yours truly. I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. We're going to cover my third place as well. But you're like, yeah, we've got Darkness in first, Jaken in second, and nothing else of interest. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at the smash.gg thing right now. I don't, I don't see up there bubbles. Uh, maybe Did... it's the production thing. Mark, Mark Theus, can we get confirmation on that? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, yeah. I had a lot of fun yesterday. Um, I, I streamed it as well on, on my Twitch. Um, so anyone who wants to see it can go and watch the VOD on there. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, we did get completely destroyed by Neon, uh, which was to be expected. I remember saying, uh, you know, guys, we're up against Neon now. So bad news, we're up against Neon. Good news, I get to go to bed. So, you know, it was a bit of a win-win situation for me. Um, and, and I also played against Baron, who who is lovely, and we had a really, really good time. He he sort of, he played that Hummer deck everyone's playing, but he snuck in a delaying tactics, which is completely unheard of. And I was like, this is a useless card. Why is he running this? This is just dead. And then about... 15 minutes into the game, he drew delaying tactics off the top of his deck and uh, killed me in one turn. So, I, you know, I, I think I've got to swallow my pride with that one and say Baron was right. You should all be running one copy of delaying tactics in uh, Germany, Britain, Hummer. But no, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm glad to see the person that knocked me is now in the top four. You always get a bit of comfort in that. There you go. You can say you lost to the best. Spoos, you and I, observers from the outside, but when, when I take a look at the decks and the lineup, and Darkness alluded to this previously, they're all very, very similar. What do you think is the cause of all four of these players bringing borderline identical lists? I mean, first of all, um, basically because they are all from the Chinese community, and we all know that this community is very active in just sharing ideas and optimizing the decks together. Like... Artemisia and Tang Tang, who are both participating today, are bringing the exact same lineup. So it's very, very clear and obvious that they shared their ideas and shared the decks and optimized it and said, we go with this, this, this. Um, the other two players have some similarities in their decks, put out some specific cards to put in other cards, maybe to be better in several matchups or just because they just like them more. Um, but yeah. Um, I think the four decks that we see today are proven to be the best for each nation, and that is, might be the reason why everybody is just bringing them, because the players have to bring four decks from four different nations. S nobody's bringing Soviets at the moment, because Soviets, I think, is a little bit behind at the moment. Um, and yeah, I think we should take a look and see who's bringing which deck. I think the Shadows or the, the viewers are expecting already what is coming up here but yeah let's take a look together what what everyone is bringing here sounds good so we've got no one coming up first darkness why don't you break this down a little bit obviously these four lineups are going to be pretty well identical so i don't think we need to go through each one with a fine tooth comb but let's take a look at the different archetypes we've got and then maybe we can dive into some of those little meta specific tweaks the players are trying to put in there yeah well, everyone is bringing German, Britain, the new aggro uh, combined arms deck, the Legion deck, US Poland, 
Uh, the very strong Britain US deck. I'm expecting this one getting banned a lot. And the Japan aggro with Germany and Frightened Retreat. Well, looking at the general idea, I'd like to start explaining the Britain Air deck. Brit Air is one of the oldest archetypes in cards. Uh, usually, this was best with Japan Ally. This changed with the second last change. Uh, the patch with United We Stand, two credits removal and giving you a ramp point. So this is an early way to remove something from the field. Uh, this kills the threat for your bombers and this gains a lot of tempo if you are able to play this turn two, maybe if you're even starting. This is why Brit Air has a little advantage over the rest of the aggro lists and this is why I'm guessing everyone will ban Brit Air. And yeah, the idea is just to play some air units and with the recent change to close air support, you are now not only able to buff a single air unit, but also the ejectants unit. So for example, you play in Swordfish, and two Greyhounds left and right, close air support will give you for one credit three three stats divided on three targets, making it very hard to remove. For example, one Flam Panzer or Sudden Strike is only able to kill one unit, but you still have a powerful buff on the field. This is amazing in in the terms of building your board. Uh, so yeah, this is why I'm. <laughs> Not surprised by everyone bringing this list. And Bubbles, you participated yesterday. Uh, almost the entire um, lineup or the entire top 16, uh, Brit Air was banned almost in every matchup. And and I know you were complaining before we started, uh, we went live, that your Brit deck was also banned despite it not being Brit Air. Yeah, so I, I wanted to break the mold a little bit, not bring the exact same decks. Um, so, you know, my Germany deck was a Germany-Soviet pincer deck. My Brit deck was a Hurricane OK OTK deck, much like the Spitfire OTK deck that Via Vitor brought to the World Championship, but obviously much cooler because I made it, um, naturally. And then other than that, I think it was pretty much the same. I, I brought this um, Japan aggro deck, I also brought a token oh, stack. You brought tokens. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought I might be the only person to bring tokens, um, but I also lost. So mm. I'm not sure what that says. Uh, you know, take from that what you will. <laughs> we, we appreciate the variety, nonetheless. Bubbles, um, as as we bring up Noro's deck or list here, and we'll see the the similarities. Booz, do you think this is a scenario where the meta is sort of figured out? You know, you were talking about it before where these are just, you have to bring four um, different nations and this is just sort of the optimized lineup for each of those four nations. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we are kind of settled at the moment a little bit. Um, especially when you have a format where you have to bring four decks and it can be an advantage to bring four decks that are kind of the same archetype, like four aggressive decks. So your opponent is having a harder choice which one to ban and you're having an advantage for for just bringing basically the same idea. And if your opponent is not having four good answers, he's having a hard time. And yeah, th that might be the reason. And I think also, what also might play a role here that the Chinese players are also known for um, liking to play aggressive decks. They're good at it. They like the play style. And as we mentioned earlier, aggro is a little bit favorite play style at the moment in cards since you only start with 20 HP starting and yeah there's so many things that are just giving aggro um, an advantage over the other archetypes at the moment and that might be the reason why we see so many aggressive decks and so many of the same decks today right on so darkness with with Noro's list up here right now do you see any small tweaks or changes or uh, you know unique cards that they're bringing to really stand out Yes, looking at Nuru's, uh, they Japan German list have 
they got the main differences I see over all decks com uh, combined. Uh, usually Japan, German, J a Frightened Retreat, J Agro is a really defined, really polished deck list. Almost everyone is bringing the same version. And it's, it's surprising if someone is switching one card, but he switched multiple cards. As you can see, he's not bringing Arados. Usually this is used for you to get your card draw, to get your one Enigma or one Frightened Retreat or Desperate Measures or Bombing Raid. But he, he's not only not using Arados, he's not using Enigma as well. What blew my mind because um, he... I'm very afraid of him just running out of cards if he's using this version. He's not having a an, an tool to get his orders out of the deck and he's having less card draw. I, I really wonder why he made the decision because he does have Enigma. He's not uh, like on low budget in his German Brit deck. You can see he's using twice Enigma. So I, I I would like to see his J Agro a few as uh, they yeah this J Agro a few times to see if this is working or uh, if if this is maybe some yeah some disadvantage for him and other changes or different cards I noticed is with the U.S. Poland deck. But this is very, very minor. As you can see, the one credit Polish card, he's using two times hell. Uh, this is an Intel card and giving your legions the ability getting plus one, plus one if they survive combat. Um, he's using two of them. For example, uh, Tang Tang is using one of this card. Artemisia as well and Noyan 5 is using none of this card but a different 1k Polish uh, Intel card Orp Othril. Um This one is adding plus 2 credit cost to a noun card but these changes are very very minor and overall uh, it's, it's basically the same. Did you find anything else boost? No, no. I think you mentioned it already a lot um, of the of the differences between the known J Agro and the and the, and Norris version. Uh, I was initially thinking that he probably was on on low budget there since he just started in December, and as we all know, special cards are hard to get. That might be the reason why there is no error doing the deck. Um, I thought the same with the Enigma, but as you already mentioned, he's. He's playing it in the German Britain deck, so I don't understand why he did not put that into that um, Japan deck. Because beside of the 22nd, he's not having any draw in the deck. And if your opponent can remove that one, it, it should be hard if you don't find the feint retreat. It uh, should be hard to, to finish your opponent off. Um, what I found out that he's playing Yamato um, as a good um, submission for the not played Aradu. And he's also playing two of the Type 98, a card that we also don't see that often. Um, that is that 2-1 tank with that's getting plus one attack when you attack once or something like that. So some yeah. very interesting submissions for that. And um, yeah, I'm also excited to see if, if this works out without any draw and how it goes for them. I, I think that that's going to be a really, really interesting point to see. And I think, Darkness, you brought up a great talking point when you mentioned it you know a, a factor around consistency and card draw it might take a few games to see that come out because if you draw properly if things are going well it, you may not notice a deficiency in card draw but i think that as certain games kind of play out that's where you may start to see that challenge now bubbles you were talking about your matchup against baron where they slipped in you know one little card you kind of weren't expecting or little nuances here and there how important do you think that is when everybody's lineups are more or less optimized to kind of sneak in something that's a little bit different 
not necessarily unexpected. Obviously, this is open deck list, so people will have access to it. But, you know, nonetheless, just a little bit of a different style of play or a little bit of a, a unique setup that you may still not be expecting. I, I certainly think there's a bit the potential for a lot of value in it. But there's also the potential to to trip yourself up with it and, and sort of, you know, really screw yourself over. Um, but because cards is quite a small player base, and, and you see this in even games with big player bases, everyone does this set thing, and then someone comes in and does something a little bit different, and suddenly that takes over. Um, and, and I think it's it's very easy, actually, to, to sort of do this, especially when you're in a top four. Because you know your opponents, it's very easy to tailor your, tailor your deck a little bit different, uh, and it gives you a big advantage. Just obviously, you do have to be careful. You know, you experiment too much, and you sort of do what me and Jay King did in the OCC. We both run forward delaying tactics. We both lose instantly. It, it's very easily done to get overly confident with this uh, kind of stuff. But little adjustments, you know, adding a Marder to Jagro, maybe, you know, this sort of stuff. It, it can give you a boost over your opponents and, and it won't make it 100% you're going to win, but you can take 50-50 to 55-45. And cards is a game of numbers. Every single point you can get, every single advantage you should take. So when you go with these slight variations, you know, adding your map to Defend Retreat, you can increase your win rate by just that little bit and that can be the make or break. So I think there's a lot of value in it, but you have to be careful what you wish for because you can easily, you know, take it too far. And that's that's the beauty of experimenting with a list that's somewhat optimized is you can increase your chances of winning by 5% or you can decrease them by 5%. And that in a top four with these types of players could be enough to make that difference between you walking away with the top prize versus you, you know, coming in in third or fourth. Let's bring up Tang Tang's list here. Now, Tang Tang and Artemisia are bringing the uh, exact same list. So, uh, Darkness, why don't you walk us through this? What uh, stands out, if anything, to you about these two identical uh, lineups? Huh. Um, yeah, I, I was muted. I, I noticed it myself. <laughs> um, I don't know if something really stands out well very interesting for me in comparison to my own decks to my own play style is the brit air list because uh, some people are still using throttfish and some people are not using this card anymore as uh, this is a one three fighter and because it's so little uh, and often not very useful in comparison to the bombers like the gladiator or the alba core um, i removed it but they didn't well of course it's another airplane you can come uh, you can use your close air support with so it's it's definitely strong no matter what and probably not a difference to the other decks uh, who will stand out because I'm expecting Brit Air getting banned a lot. Well, the, the most interesting part about Tang Tang and 9 5 decks is that they, they have one difference. Yeah, I, I spotted the one different. Tang Tang is not using Enigma in his German deck. And No and 5 is using one Enigma, but no Comet. Hmm. So, I um, can't see that one. No and 5 is uh, choosing a little bit more card draw and refill, and Tang Tang is choosing the comet what is an interesting choice well both cards are targeting at the same uh, spot in in the game uh, after you blew out most of your stuff like you you're running low on cards you're running low on options and you're finding a way of coming back or to finish your opponent with a lot of card draw you can come back but in an in a tournament where everyone is bringing fast decks, how much value will Enigma give you? So having a Comet who can just attack with 4 damage every single turn and I 
believe no one is bringing guards except for the legions. Uh, this comet could make the difference over Enigma. Spooz, you were making a little bit of a funny face while Darkness was yeah. talking about that. Are you, uh, you, do you disagree? Are you... Yeah, honestly, I don't see the difference. Maybe I have the wrong deck list, but for me, Tang Tang and, and Ardi Mijer are both bringing Comet in the German deck. <laughs> You're right. Uh, You're right. Yeah. Um, I, I messed this up. <laughs> they're, they're both bringing Comet. I was compar comparing this to Noir 5. Yeah, yeah. Noir 5 is the one that is bringing the most um, differences between all the decks. Like also in that. Um, US Poland Legion stack, he's bringing two Karas over two Tarnal regiments. Every one of the other players is bringing Tarnal regiment, but No. 5 put them out and put in Karas for that. We saw it in the OCC very often that Tarno did almost nothing than just being a good body on the board and not spawning any Legions. And No. 5 probably thought about, um, yeah, why not just giving me a card that is making my legions able to grow because I have the plan west in the deck that is giving me the legions and I want to have the Karas that is giving me additional um, intel cards so it gives me draw it gives, makes my in, uh, and my legions grow a little bit more so that is one of the biggest differences from known five to all the other submissions in the US deck so very very interesting uh, do you mean no no I think known five is having that one are this is what happens with... when all That's four players... That's what happens when everybody's bringing the yeah, same lineup. everyone has yeah. the same decks. Everyone's like, there's a difference. It's sort of like those spot the difference oh, games. Look, yeah. the players That's something kid. that I mixed up, yeah. So Noro is bringing... <laughs> Wait, where's the Karas? Am I stupid? Noro is not bringing Karas. But Uprising. Bringing Karas. We swear we looked at these beforehand. I, I think we're going to have to get some sort of help next time this kind of scenario happens. And maybe Mark Theus behind the scenes can just circle um, everything that's different. Yeah, every difference, deck. please. Yeah. Spot, yeah. So. Spot the difference. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, everyone so. is. Yeah, yeah. Forget what I said. Everybody's bringing Tarno Regiment, but <laughs> not everyone is bringing Karas. So that is one difference. I mean, if we're confused about it, can you imagine with these players trying to determine who they're playing against and what matchup they want to see when they're, you know, deciding how they want to move forward into these games? Bubbles, you're our resident investigative reporter. You know, I know you're, you've got your, your tentacles out there touching on a whole lot of different things. What do you think the mindset becomes with the Chinese community, four of their top players coming in here, all similar decks, likely prepared together, what sort of, I don't want to say mind games, but how do you prepare for that, knowing very well what your opponent's bringing? How do you figure out how you want to approach your series? I mean, I, I think the, the things which come in handy are deck knowledge and experience, knowing how these decks interact with each other, having played all of them all. Because there's, there's a big difference between bringing a meta deck and knowing a meta deck. These are two very different things. And who knows their, their meta decks better, who's got more experience with these particular matchups, I think will play a really, really crucial role in this. Um, and, and I think there's also another amount of um, lack of pressure to say. For example, I, I've prepped with people before, and I always say to them, look, let's not worry about countering each other. Let's focus on beating everyone else. Mm -hmm. And if we happen to face off, we've got this agreement that neither of us are trying to counter each other. So it's win-win for both of us. And it honestly wouldn't surprise me if they'd said the same thing. Look, we can all try and counter each other and then lose to everyone else, or we cannot worry about it. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they've gone with this, let's not worry about it route. And now they've reached the top four and they're going, well, look at this. It's great. Now, it, now it's just a load of fun, a barrel of fun. Um, so I, I think there may actually be less pressure because all the decks are the same. Um, but it does also create that little bit of difficulty of how do I gain the, the edge up? You know, e even when you're up against a friend, you want to win. You want to beat them no matter what. Um, and, and I think that edge up will come down to experience and knowledge. I mean, three of these four players are walking away with cash and one of them isn't. So you don't want to be that last person left in, in fourth place. Um, Spooz, so we were talking about, you know, that that sort of match up of figuring out okay what am i bringing what am i not who am i going up and i i've just been corrected thank you mark theus all four players uh walk away with cash so 
Uh, yeah, a real expert war room today. We're really bringing you, putting the expert in expert panel. Um, but Spooz, as I was as I was bringing up, we've got uh, you know four players here trying to compete, trying to win, bringing very similar decks to to Bubbles. Um, thought you know maybe there's a little bit less pressure, but how do you try and get that leg up when you're getting into this this type of scenario where you know mostly what they're bringing? How do you try and figure out how you get that small little percentage point? to get ahead of the game? Yeah, first of all, I think it's it all starts with picking the correct band there. Like, we, each one is bringing four decks here, and each one has to ban one deck from the opponent. And I think it starts with this. You really have to think, what are my preferred matchups? What are my least preferred matchups? And then just look what your opponent is bringing and just choose wisely which, one, which deck to ban. Yeah, and then it, I think it depends a lot of... Um, especially with the German Brit deck, for example, it also depends a lot of who's going first and second today, I guess, because some of the matchups you're really favorable when you go first, and some matchups you it's better to go second. So it also depends a little bit on that. And then, yeah, I think you just try to play your A game, get the most value out of your cards, and, and that is the best you can do, I guess. So, so I, well, go ahead, Bubbles. I just want to make a comment on bands. I want to make a prediction before it's too late. All, all bands are Brit today. Every single ban, all Brit. That's what I'm going. You know those uh, oops, all whatever cereal? It's oops, all Brit today. All Brit bans, every series. That's my prediction. And if, if it doesn't work out that way, you can hold me to it and throw me in the Icelandic Ocean. Okay. <laughs> or I'm, I'm writing that down. I'm writing that down. Um... <laughs> Do you think it's one of those scenarios, and, and Spoods, I saw you kind of nodding along with Bubbles talking, and, and Darkness, you had mentioned before that it's likely that Brit is is banned, but I, I want, I'm want i wondering if this is a scenario where, you know, that one person can come out and say, I'm going to do something different and either look like an absolute genius and win or look like a complete goof when they when they mess things up. So Darkness, do you, you agree with Bubbles here? You think it's going to be all, ba all Brit banned all day long? I'm expecting this too, but I'm I'm looking forward to uh, someone change my mind and Britain, maybe Germany, maybe even Legions. I don't know. Uh, I I would like to see that like standing out of the mainstream. This would would be interesting to to analyze to to watch, but I'm expecting everyone to ban Brit. It would be a great experiment to see, and it would also be lovely tossing bubbles off the coast of Iceland. Fantastic. Um, great, friends. Well, thank you so much for helping break down these decks. Obviously, it's a, a difficult feat because they are all borderline identical. I, for one, am really excited to see them all go head to head uh, to try and determine, you know, who is the best here? Who can, um, you know, reign supreme when everybody's bringing very, very similar tools to this event? Now, before we wrap things up, any final thoughts here? Um, Darkness, let's start with you. Anything you're expecting to see, you're not expecting to see, or are going to be surprised about? Well, this time, as yeah, we mentioned before, everyone is having the same lineup, probably will ban the same. Uh, now it's really interesting to not analyze the different kind of decks and archetypes and matchups. It's like the strategy, what what they're bringing first, although this could be like paper, scissors, stone. Uh, it's very interesting to to analyze the game plan, like the piloting of those decks, and looking at the the few different cards. If something is standing out, for example, no enigma in Nero's Japan aggro list, maybe he. He's losing in the end. Maybe he just has more units in the beginning to to get an advantage over his opponent. Uh, analyzing those, the way how those players are playing their decks will be very interesting. Especially since this is an aggro meta and those Chinese are the experts for the current meta. So we, we are analyzing and learning from the best. Well said, Darkness. I think it's so interesting to, to your point, 
not talking about what decks, what lineups were brought, but really that nuance of how they're going to play it, how the decks are going to line up, who's going first, who's going second, all that. Bubbles, as we go to you for final thoughts, I want to ask one question as well. Um, you know, Noro being a, a fairly, I guess, relative newcomer compared to the other three, you talked before about not just bringing meta decks, but knowing meta decks. Do you think they're at a bit of a disadvantage based on the fact they just have fewer games under their belt? Definitely. I, I think that's always going to be a factor. Um, but they also could have an advantage. I'm not going to say they will, but it's possible they have an advantage because they'll play and, and do the, the game pace in certain ways you wouldn't expect um, because you just don't know them as a player. When I'm up against familiar names, I generally know the pacing they like to play at. I know this mm -hmm. person plays quickly. They want to go for a quick win. This person, you know, for, for example, J King preferences the long game and i asked him why why do you preference the long game and he gave a really good reason which is the longer the game goes the more chances the weaker player has to make mistakes which makes complete sense um so we don't know how Nuru likes to play Nuru likes to play the game his opponents probably don't know and he could catch people off guard and, and sort of play more aggressively than they expect and just overrun them so that, that could work to their advantage, but there's a definite disadvantage and a possible advantage. So it's certainly not looking good. Thank you for breaking that down, Bubbles. Spooz, any final thoughts? Yeah, I would like to see Noro winning that whole event today because that would prove everyone. I mean, he already proved it, that cards is not really a pay-to-win game. So he just started in December last year, so she's just barely six months into the game and it's already the top four of a big tournament where you already mentioned it 200 people participated and that is really impressive and it really proves he's just beside the one or two changes he's just playing all the meta decks that everyone is playing so he's having all the important decks to be successful in cards to be competitive in cards and that really proves that cards is not pay to win and that's why he deserves to to just win here today and just proving that in a in a next level with 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 this win here yeah i love that spooz i think it's a great point that you know any anybody can do this it doesn't take a long time it doesn't take a lot of money competing working hard having a great support team and system around them definitely helps but i think that seeing somebody like this go ahead and win an open is it just shows that the game is in a really great place from a, a free-to-play perspective and from you know not feeling the need to grind all kinds to uh, to be able to compete so thank you all three of you for your insight i uh, i appreciate that tremendously i am excited to see how this is now all going to play out so stay tuned for cards open 11 the four of us will be joined by ollie as we dish out 1500 dollars worth of prize pool in just a few moments
Welcome everybody to Cards Open 11. I am joined by the one and only Ollie. Ollie, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. I mean, it's uh, Cards Open Day. That is my favorite day up there with OCC days, right? So, um, you know, I've been listening to you guys doing the War Room. Uh, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting day. Uh, and we're seeing, once again, you know, the Asian Chinese community prove themselves um, and and I think I think they look at 2022 as as their year, you know, uh, just not going to be any COVID. Hopefully, you know, preventing them from from locking in the world championship title as well. So I think they got got something to prove. Absolutely, and I mean we talked about it on our our expert panel, and I'll I'll use the term loosely because we we're all in top form today. <laughs> but um, you know, you see a group like that come together, work together to build out a strategy, to build out their lineups. And we see four lineups that are very, very similar today. Is that something that you as a developer are also thinking, oh, maybe it's time to shift up the meta a little bit? Or is that just, you know, a community coming together and deciding, hey, this is what we want to do? Uh, I mean, so I, I actually, you know, that that Hummer deck uh, specifically, right? You know, it's one of the fastest decks that has kind of come out in, in, in recent years. And obviously it can only be one deck slot here, but it is pretty prevalent, you know, on ladder. A lot of the times, a lot of people use that to grind themselves up into Field Marshal. I know I did. So, you know, we've had conversations about that internally, but the, the kind of overall consensus is, you know, let's not be the the type of developer that like runs in whenever something like this pops up and you know nerfs everything to to you know the ground. Um, we're gonna give the community a little time to to kind of figure out counters to this. To uh, and if if there aren't any, right, that's when we want to step in. I would say, you know, even though we're seeing the tournament meta now solidifying quite a bit, um, I've still been having a diverse time on ladder, right, in terms of uh, what I'm meeting here and there. So. I mean, I think this also just speaks to the fact that, you know, the Chinese players, they do play a lot together. You know, you know they, they kind of uh, decide on their tournament deck lineups together. So I think that has a big, big impact here as well. If you would have like two Chinese players and two Western players, I don't think we would have, you know, the same deck lists all around, uh, especially not if you had bubbles. I'm sure, you know, he would bring tokens <laughs> or something. Um, so, so, you know, I think there's still plenty of diversity, but, you know, we're not that far off uh, a future expansion. You know, there's a balance patch dropping. So it's uh, it's in a pretty good spot. Um, but also, just let's be real. These guys, you know, they're really good at really quickly identifying what's best within each nation. And if something is just simply best within that nation, then, of course, they're going to be bringing it. But um, I liked, you know, the way you guys were talking in the war room, because I think, you know, in a, in a situation where everybody's bringing the same decks, it becomes a lot more nuanced, you know, like who's going to win. Of course, it's going to be card draw dependent, but you're also going to be thrown into situations where you're maybe in a mirror matchup. You know every single card, you know exactly what your opponent is doing. And then you got to kind of make a decision and look for opportunities to like, can I torpedo their plans, you know, here? Um, and one example of this is, you know, you're seeing... I think it's two out of four Hummer decks bringing one Flampanzer, right? You draw that Flampanzer, you know, have it in your starting hand, you get ready with it on turn three, and then all of a sudden their platform to deliver a ton of damage to your face has been negated and you got a unit on board. So these type of nuances are what I'm looking forward to and I'm looking for today. So it's going to be an interesting one. Absolutely. And we talked about it a bit on the War Room, but when everybody's bringing the same tools, it comes down to really that that skill gap and and where the players may be able to find that extra inch that extra one percent you did talk yeah. about the tournament meta being solidified a little bit in the way of lineups but we do have a relative newcomer and i know how much ollie you love when cards open happens because it's anybody's game right somebody like noro can come in having played for about six months completely free to play, and all of a sudden they're on the main stage fighting for a $1,500 prize pool. Exactly. Um, I, like you said, I love it when that happens, and we can bring up the bracket there, because <clears throat> there are a few more names that I want to highlight here, um, because you look at you look at the top right corner of the bracket, right? You got Yashin and you got Apera. Now, these are two, play, uh, two players that I've seen in Twitch chat every single tournament for the past year, right? Uh, and now I'm seeing them in the top bracket of cards opens 
right? And that for me is a huge, huge um, deal, right? Because you have someone there that's playing cards, that's watching the tournaments, that's consuming all the content that we're, you know, creating around it, and they're working their way towards there. And you know, just a huge shout out to those two players because I have a feeling that they're going to be making it into top fours, you know, uh, relatively soon. Uh, of course, you got Noro, and you know a little bit of background. Noro's only been playing for six months, right? This is a six-month-old player. Uh, you know, he's basically completely free to play in his journey, and he's now here in the Cards Open top four. He's got a, a really nice deck lineup. You know, he's not discounting uh, any cards really. And let's see, you know, does he have what it takes to become a Cards Open champion within six months of starting the game? If so, I think that's also an awesome story. Absolutely. And there's some wonderful stories here. You mentioned Yashin on the, the right side of the bracket. They also uh, won, I believe, the second qualifier. So not only a question of them making it to the top 16, but they had a phenomenal performance on the uh, on that on that second weekend. So that's an awesome story. You got Noro going up against Noen, who uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, has actually won uh, cards open 10. So if... Yep. Um, you know, if Noro can, can make it to the finals, that, that is already a heck of an achievement, let alone taking the whole thing home. We've got Tang Tang and Artemisia on the other side of the bracket, a couple of, uh, of veterans when it comes to cards, uh, tournament play. So a lot of great matchups. We're going to have some phenomenal nuanced back and forth with a lot of these lineups being very, very similar. Uh, mm -hmm. any, any final thoughts, Ollie, before we kick it over to, uh, Spoos and Bubbles for the first matchup? Uh, no, I mean, just a huge uh, good luck to all the players. Um, I always think it's it's really cool how consistent uh, these top players have become in cards. I think that's also a good sign just for the tournament scene and the game in general. So I'm looking forward to uh, watching the matches. So let's just uh, let's get it on. Get it. Get the show on the road. Sounds like a plan. Spooz bubbles. Let's get into Noro versus Noin. We're saying something. Oh, yeah, I, I was okay. waiting for you. I was like, yeah, go on. Usually <laughs> you start first. So yeah, welcome everyone to the to the first match of today. It is Tang Tang versus uh, Noen Five versus Noro, the newcomer. So Bubbles, um, what do you expect from from this first match today? Uh, I'm really not sure. It's a good question. I, I expect a lot of hummers and a lot of very big hummers. Um, I expect not much Brit Air, as I spoke about earlier. Um, and, and I expect a good series, to be totally honest. I, I'm very excited to see where it goes. Having Neon absolutely destroy me in the qualifiers made me even more excited to see if someone else is able to take him down, you know, avenge me a little bit. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm super, super excited. Um, I, I think one of the decks to look out for is going to be this USA, uh, USA Poland deck. I think this is going to be one of the more difficult decks I, I think I, I people may disagree with me, but I don't like this deck. I don't like it against Hummer. I don't like it against Jaguar. I feel like you get burnt out. I, I'm not a big fan of this deck. And I, I know that um, Nuru was disappointed with this deck in the qualifiers. They found mm -hmm. this deck disappointing. And, you know, I doubt they'll be targeting it as a ban. And I think the only real player in, in you know, this trio uh that that values it is neon but i know he's a very good player and values it a lot so i think that deck's gonna be an interesting one to look out for um other than that though i'm pretty much not sure what to expect i'm very open-minded to what's going to happen what about you do you have any expectations or is it as as blurry as it is to me i mean i expect as long as we are not seeing the us versus us mirror matchup i expect a very fast series today since all of the decks are more like um shoot and win or just lose on turn five like the hammer deck when you lose your big tank and you don't find your draw engine and your opponent is also low on cards could be hard to find any good comeback chances there and yeah the also the the jagro deck and the the brit air deck which we all expect are getting banned anyways so we I have think the, the longest... bands ready we have the bands ready yeah, and yeah. It is. do you want to see them Ooh. The first surprise we see bubbles Whoa. naked in the Atlantic Ocean. Or how was I didn't that? say naked. I didn't <laughs> oh, say naked. Just in my mind? You, you had was that out. just in my yeah. mind? Okay. <laughs> uh, you see what you okay. want to see, okay? But yeah, we see Neon not banning Britain, which was a big surprise. I expected Britain banned every round. 
Um, and then other than that, I think it's, you know, going to be pretty much how we expect it to be. But I'm very interested to see why he's not banned Britain. Um, what does he feel like he has against it? Is it just this USA deck, which has some backline hate? Does he feel like the Hummer deck destroys it, even though there are ways of Britain very early on gaining big units as well and dealing with these Hummers? Um, what do you think, Spooz? Why, why the ignoring Brits and banning the USA Poland deck, which conveniently for Nuru, they were saying they don't feel too comfortable with? Yeah, I'm not really sure. One reason might be that, as I mentioned just one minute ago, um, the US versus US matchup might be the longest one. And I think since it's already not too early in, in China, a reason might be that he just wants to dodge the mirror matchup and wants to have some fast matches here today. And he's very comfortable to also Brit, uh, beat Brit Air and did just go for it probably. I don't know. Now here we go. We see both Mulligans. Both starting with German Hummer deck. Yeah. Combined a, arms. Got a very nice very similar here. starting yeah. hand. So Nero finding some pretty nice cards. Able to go for the Panzer and the Gryph on turn two. However, this 0k unit, this power regiment, super, super powerful. And it can really grow out of hand very quickly if you're not able to deal with it. You know, I've seen this getting into like a 5-5 five five or a 6-6 six six in some of my games. And it just feels absolutely terrifying considering it's it's a free unit. Yeah, especially because it's just a threat in itself, right? If you don't remove that one, it can just grow and grow. And then your opponent on the next turn is just playing another unit and preparing his big handshell or combined arms. It, it can be a very strong opening with that deck. Neon keeping all of the cards. Looked like he might have timed out there, but I think this was intentional because this was a good hand. You can drop the Panzer 2C, and I think you actually save this 0k infantry. Um, but obviously, doesn't have all the information we have. Nuru has a super strong turn two, able to go with the Jaeger Pincer to reduce the op cost, and then give it plus two plus two, um, and run up this three five tank. Yeah, and non five, not with a Flam Panzer in hand. Not with a Flam Panzer. However, combined arms of his own, he's going to be able to fight back and do the exact same thing. Just unfortunately for him, will not have the front line. Do you feel like you just respond with the same move? You can also drop this little infantry in the process. Oh, he can feel... buff it twice, right? Make it a 5-7 and kill that? Oh, no, they uh, cannot no, operate no, no. now. He cannot yeah. operate. Going for the double buff, even though he can't trade. Oh. Just getting it nice what? and He ready. knows that Noro is not having the flam panzer, so he can just yep. go big here. No punishment. However... Possibly. There is the potential for the second power to come out a little bit later. However, like you say, no flam panzers for Nuru, so able to double buff. Not a great hand here for Nuru. Really, he needed another buff. I imagine we'll see him dump his entire hand and just rush it all out into the front line. May go for the value trade on this power to stop it trading back. But I, I think we'll probably see um, Nuru trying to end the game as quickly as they possibly can since... The longer the game goes, the scarier Neon, uh, Neon 5's board is going to become. And yeah, so no, I, no. yeah, I, I thought yeah. they could play the 35T as well. You know, some bubbles maths. Yeah, as you mentioned, um, no running out of cards here since, and, and no one with the advantage. He did go second, but having yeah. the advantage of having two more cards. Look at that, and look 8, at this. 10 tank. Yeah, now it backfires that Noro is not having a flam panzer in his deck. Not at least one copy, so no one can just Why go as big as he wants. Creek, though. Wait, is that lethal? Nine? No, Thirteen it's damage. Thirteen damage. It's one off lethal. Oh my god. Oh, no. And also one credit short of also deploying the panzer yeah, thirty five. One credit short of doing it with a thirty five T. Oh my god, one else. I think you go anyways, right? You have to go for it, and then you have to hope that you're going to find this Henkel, this 1-2 um, Blitz Bomber. Blitz out that and, and finish the game with that. Doesn't go for it. Instead, tries to play it a little bit slower, Whoa, but I think we that... may see this backfire. You, your, your best bet was probably getting Neon down to one health and then just trying to get this top deck, which is unlikely, but maybe, you know, un unlikely is better than not at all. Yeah, I mean, even if 
Known five would not find the thirty-five T now. He could trade away two yeah. units, and even that is that is another. What is it? Nine damage just, so you're two off, anyways. But maybe yeah. he waits for another good top deck. Oh god. But what what can you find at this point? You know, I I feel like uh, the Blitzkrieg T. into Bomber was your was your best bet for for winning. And, and if if Nuri finds that Bomber now, it's going to be a very very sad. Uh, Oh, State just imagine! Affairs. Just yeah. imagine! Oh, let's not see that. No. <laughs> I kind of want to. I kind of want to see it. Finds Hummer. the hammer. Hammer not having blitz. No. This is not looking great. It's certainly not. Now we're running out of steam very quickly here. Did have that slight burst. Goes for the blitz creek now. May as well get some damage in. Yeah, I think that's it. That eight six Panzer two. Yeah. I don't see any way how Noro is stopping that one. And you know, I must say, I'm very happy that these Jaeger regiments have come into meta because they're with this uh, reduction of op cost. It's sort of like extra growths, right? You're able to spam up these like tanks and run them up for free. I, I'm very happy to see that these have come more into the meta. Yeah, I feel pretty like exciting. How, how just the... one change to a card can just. Yeah. Bring cards like Raider Regiment back into or or in the meta for the first time. It's really interesting. Yeah, I think Blitzkrieg is the correct choice. It helps you quickly end the game. We'll most likely see yeah the trade, and then I imagine we'll also see Neon trade into that Hammer, um, just to secure that Jaeger stays alive, so that you have this Blitzkrieg lethal next turn. Yeah, absolutely. And there's Enigma. Oh <laughs> no! Four credits, draw one. <laughs> oh god, into, into a combined, a combined arms. arms. Well, I, I guess Nuru can take a little bit of comfort in the fact that there wasn't that bomber sitting on top of their deck because that would have been very unfortunate. But there you yeah. go, a quick game one for Neon. As we all expected. So that German deck is now out of the way for Noon. You cannot play it again. So do you expect Noru to just go with this deck again? And what would Noon pick against that? Yeah, I very much feel like you just picked the same deck again. It's one of the strongest decks in the meta at the moment. And I imagine we'll see Neon 5 go for his USA Poland deck because he's very comfortable with this deck. And, and I imagine he feels just sort of at home with this. Even though it's not the greatest matchup, it's, uh, it's just sort of a comfort. Yeah, what's that deck offering to, to deal with, I don't know, a 5-7 Panzer 2? Uh, at the moment, your best bet is bounce. You you use yeah. this uh, this four state. yeah underground state. You bounce it back to hand, uh, and maybe if you can get a united we stand off, you can also get the red devils out on turn uh, two, which can be super useful. Um, but we see Nuru maybe anticipating it. Switch to Brit Air, so we've got Brit Air versus USA Poland, and, and we'll get to test here Neon's theory of if this is a, a good matchup for them. Swordfish turn one. Uh, it's always so annoying to to yeah. to face. Responding with the red devils. And also two greyhounds and the close air support in hand. Yeah. I imagine though we may see a greyhound rush into the front line. Yeah. There is a certain amount of logic to playing two to set up this cast on all three. But with this red devils, it's so important to take the front line and not let this move up. Yeah, the opponent can not really punish it, right? There's not not a lot of tools to get rid of that Greyhound, so it might stick there when your turn starts next turn, and then you can just go with a second Greyhound, have a 3-3 Bomber, but you cannot attack into the Red Devils next turn. No, I feel like you put down a Greyhound, then you buff the Greyhound and the Swordfish yeah. in the back, back line, and then you just trade into one of these little chocolate infantry. I, I don't think you need to worry too much, um, and you, you are getting a little bit of extra value buff. Now, Neon can respond with this um, buff here, this 2k United we stand, um, but I don't think it will help too much. Unity is strength, but yeah, Unity we have, two, strength, we have, we have yes, too much yes. unations in the in the game so far. With all too the navels, unity. we just get yeah. Yeah, 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 we have too much unity. After all the naval, we get too, more unity into the game. And he did exactly what you said. Wait, did he? He played two. He played, he played oh, no, the he play Greyhound, buffed it, and then went for yeah. the trade. Then we see the unity of strength. Dude, I'm telling you I'm a soothsayer. I have oh, these, these magical abilities <laughs> to see what other people are going to do. 
but not figure out the right move myself. <laughs> and then the yeah, we see Nuru really taking hold of the game in this scenario. Goes for the trade, just securing the board as much as possible. Now, Neon will have the opportunity soon to put down this medical battalion, um, but currently not really an option. We may see this Karas come down just to get something down, um, and then also this 32nd. We may see the Sherman, but you kind of have to do something if you're Neon here, otherwise you're on course to losing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also not good enough to just drop more 32nd onto yeah. the board. You have to be bring a big boy here. Might just be in from the Swordfish, I guess. And there's the Gladiator. Wow, what a board. And also now, that Greyhound is doing a lot of work here with giving all of them plus one attack. However, Neon can go for this med uh, med medical battalion. Oh, <laughs> struggle in there. This medical battalion and then go for the trade mm. and have this, uh, this Red Devil's heal back to full health, which could be uh, potentially a very strong move. Removing that plus one attack that is so important. Yeah, and also if, if Noru wants to get rid of the Red Devils, he needs to spend his whole next turn for it. Like all, he has to attack with all three of his airplanes and with the plus one additional credit to target that Red Devils. It just costs him six credits. No one thinking about different lines here. No, going for the medical attack. Yet it's obviously the best play here, I guess. Give me a Plus three health back, getting rid of the Greyhound, so all support line units from Noro just lose plus one attack there. Oh, and another close air support. What a top deck. Going pure face. We. Yeah, I mean, he's down to yeah. nine. Gets him down to nine, however, with this we can do it in hand. Also this underground state. Neon does have options, and the longer this medical stays on board, the more value it sort of offers Neon. And also these Red Devils on the front line now with 4 attack. I mean, Noro has the Rough Lightning, but it can only bounce, bounce once. Oh, okay, never mind. Bounce twice now. <laughs> <laughs> Just top decks that other one. But I like this, bounce the guard, pressure the face. If you, if you go face then, you have to commit to it. And I certainly think this is the right move. I imagine we'll see Neon go for this. We can do it to heal up and then take out one of these units. However, with the Hauka off the top of the deck, you can take out two air units. Just is at risk of getting blitzed out with a um, finest hour and then just getting killed. Just goes for the Gladiator and kills the Swordfish with the Hellcat. But a finest hour off the yeah. top would be game. Also, yeah, and he's also having mobilization, right? So he can yeah. just also try to find um, Empire Strength or stuff like that. Yeah, Empire Strikes, Finest Hour, Wellington. There's a lot of things off the top of this deck which could just spell GG if you go for this move. So we'll see what does Nuru end up getting. And that mobilization can make the difference here in the end. Ooh. Yeah. However, this we can do it is going to be coming in next turn. Finds the Empire Strikes and... Oh, oh my what lord! in the world? Bombers for days! You can go for face HMS, now. Albacore and the Empire Strikes. Yeah, and that we can do it cannot really... No, it's not going to be enough. Plus three, then he goes HMS into Empire Strikes and attacks with both bombers, yep. right? Has the Albacore as well, just in case, you know. And yeah, Legion's being completely useless against bombers. Yeah. And that's it. Oh, wait, yeah, he's having exactly enough credits. Yeah. Nine credits. Holy moly, that was a good mobilization. If so long as he one. doesn't, you know, make a huge miscalculation, there you go. Goes for the HMS. Goes for the double attack on face. Nice. And there you go. A one, huge one. mobilization. 
Nuru taking game uh, game two, making it one one, and uh, Neon Five maybe regretting not banning the Brit deck. <laughs> yeah, I want to say the same thing. Maybe, but yeah, he also does not have to deal with this U.S. Poland legions there. Because we saw in the OCC when you have this deck, especially in the mirror, can be so hard to play and needs so much brain power from yourself that it can be just the best idea to ban it and hope to be good against the rest of your opponent's decks. But turns out that Brit deck just performed as we all expected. Now we've got Jagro for Nuru and up against Lone. this USA Poland deck. Turn one um, type 93 really isn't ideal, but with this 20 second, you can still win this game. Yeah, whenever you see that one from your opponent, you think you, you might have a good shot, right? Type 93 on turn one is not really what you want to do when you are a Jaguar player. Usually you want to have your 15th cavalry, your bicycle regiments, anything like that. But just the plain type 93 gets the Befehlswagen on board. Type 94. Next turn, we might just see the 22nd to get the draw in. Since we all said earlier, he's not having Enigma, he's not having our juice in the deck. So he needs to make this 22nd stay on the board and do the draw work here. Oh, but the 32nd are offering so much value here for Norman. Perfectly trading into everything in the front line and just giving him draw additionally. And also triple plan West in hand. Yeah, and the weak can do it. And if you can get a Jasco from the Sky Train, it becomes even nicer. I, oh. I wouldn't be surprised actually if we saw the Sky Train come out this guy. Because you know it will be safe for a turn and get to spread out some units, which gives you some trading power. Plan West. Risky against the idea of a desperate measures, but with yeah. none on with none on site. Finds the feigned retreat, so doesn't have to worry about draw. And uh, I'd miss that, I think. But do you see, do you notice what's uh, in Nuru's hand? The Type 98 key? Yeah, yeah. Or He's key playing key? the Type 98, yeah. I, I don't know how I missed that. I, I guess it's just I didn't go looking for it, you know? Yeah, he's playing Yamato and that one for Enigma and Aradu. And there it is. Yeah, really, really interesting. He's having Enigma in his collection and deciding to go Type 98 over Enigma. That is really an interesting decision. What do you think about this? Is he seeing something that we all do not see? Or what might be the idea? Because well, what is he doing if he's not finding a feigned retreat? If this is at the bottom of his deck? Can you ever win with this? I mean, I understand the idea of reducing the order count so that you're more likely to get feigned retreats, but he's still running four orders. Yeah, and um, also no error do, yeah. so he's not increasing any chances to find a feigned retreat with playing lower amount of orders. Maybe he just believes in the high roll. Uh, maybe, yeah. But do you think Type 98 is something you really want to replace it with? I mean, it's having zero op cost, right? Two damage. It can be free damage as well. Yeah. And then with a Type 93, four damage, it stacks up. Unfortunately, not really finding the desperate measures here for... No, for however, Nauru. with this feigned in hand, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. And mm. I'd honestly like to see this feigned drop this turn. I, I know not everyone agrees with me on this, but I think on curve feigned is one of the most scary things for a mid-range deck to see. Yeah, I, I when I watched your games or some of your games yesterday, um, I saw in very early feigned retreat you had a lot of cards left in yeah, your hand and also I, some high value cards, but you just just go for the feigned retreat and I thought, ooh, that was I, interesting. I, I won that game as well. You've got to yeah. go for it. The value. I, because I did not expect it to go that well, honestly. Yeah, but look at it this way: What does your hand size matter? Right, it doesn't matter your hand size. Because you play Feigned Retreat, you essentially have an infinite-sized hand. So long as you can buy that first or second turn you get of having a lack of options, then you then pop off with it. Um, however, Nuru deciding to take the more conservative route. Ooh, and Akita didn't face there, very good. However, 
Neon 5's hand still looking really scary, and I imagine he's playing around this turn 8. Uh, and for those that don't see it on turn 8, he can go plan west and we can do it. Uh, and buff up two guards as well as heal his HQ. And this Radiant Brigade has now been played, so that can even be used to take out one of these um, buffed up guards. So he just has to decide, how does he want to play this turn? He may go for the trade and then push a Kali into the front line. And then when this We Can Do It comes out, this Kali becomes really, really scary. May go, yeah, goes for the Plan West instead. Goes for the trade, goes for the Sky Train. See what he gets. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, but it's golden. At least. Yeah, it, it produces gold. Key 83 rolling in. And oh, no, this, not really having a response yeah. for that. The very, I don't know. I I would have liked the feigned retreat over the KI this turn. What's this KI doing? Trading one unit a turn? You know, it's it's sort of useless. Yeah. And now, what other options do you have? You don't really have any. But you drop the you you can drop the the Kani and then play the feint. You could even pin something on your way out. Pin that 30 second, keep it in the support line to clog up that support line. Yeah, maybe he wants to get something big on the sender before he just discards it. But yeah, I agree with you um, in a way. I think I would not play it on curve when I have a lot of value cards left in hand or something like Akita and Mido that I can just blitz out this turn and, and maybe wait. As long as I'm in the support line, I think I'm fine with keeping the feint one more turn. But, but yeah, he, I think he should have. Yeah, yeah he, I think he should have played it last turn. I mean, the the key, as long as it's surviving, is doing something similar for him, right? Also giving an additional draw, but also his opponent, while also being a threat, and helps you to get rid of the sky train, maybe. Which is probably never going to happen with all with all these legions. Huh. Tough situation here for Noro. Yeah, it's certainly looking like a neon game at this point. I mean, like we said before, this is one of Neon's most comfortable decks. Um, they gained a reputation oh. for Britair, Jagro, yeah. and this. Those are their sort of three they're known for. Did you see what he got? He got yeah. a Jasko. Uh, the Jasko essentially nullifying the, the signal, which is already yeah. amazing on its own, but also brings lots of other things to the table. Mito's now doing one damage. It, it really solidifies you. However, Nuru is able to take it out, but he'd have to use two knife he'd have to use the type 93 and then two surprise attacks, which would prevent this feigned retreat by yet another turn. Interesting goes for the guard in the support line rather than the guard in the front line. Maybe deciding that, you know, this sky train has to die, he can go for the type 93 in the trade. Goes face. That was interesting with the Jasko on board. Huh. I don't have an explanation because I'm confused. Me too. It seemed like a, a very, very high risk strategy, which is generally not what you want to do when you're behind. I mean, look at this, your entire board is being destroyed now. I could see the play when the Jesko would not, uh, would not be on the board. Yeah. Because then he can just wait for his Midos to deal the additional damage there, especially after playing the Feigned Retreat, and maybe he finds the Signal Regiment. Uh, he can but take now... out the Jesko and go for the Type 94. Double sudden, uh, double surprise attack it. Yeah, but how many <laughs> cards is he having in his day? <laughs> More of them. At least he can... You so yeah, you, you them, have to it... kill that Jasko, and then you can pop the feint. I mean, maybe there's a method to his madness, you know? Wait, he's not killing Jasko. He's probably Hold going on. for the 30 second in the front line. Or Sky Train, even. Yeah, if he goes for the Sky Train after hitting face, I'm going to be <laughs> reviewing everything I knew about cards. Yeah, he goes there for the Jesco. Go. That's yes. the only play that makes sense. He goes for the Feint Retreat, and now you you really hope you find your Signal, Mido, Akita, everything that just is possible to hit face there. Another Hellcat for Noin. 
I'm going to say it. It's the Yamato. I can feel the Yamato. You know, Not I hate big. to be... No. I Yes, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I, I can feel it. Yeah, My he's still having bombing raids. He's having desperate measures and Yamato left on the deck. Yeah. Desperate measures would actually be quite strong here. You take out a huge chunk of the board and then you can finish off trading with the other units you have. Um, and there is a Legions below that Sendai, so you can trade off the Sendai, trade off the Type 93. Obviously, if you can find some other units and then draw into the Desperate Measures, it's, it's even stronger. Oh, not the Yamato. But also not really what you want to see here. Finds I mean, everything meter. is better than an Order, right? Yeah. That is not Desperate However, measures. Desperate Measures would be very powerful here. It's going to need to take out some of these hard hitters. So you can trade a Mito and this Type 93 if you want, or you can trade the Type 93 first. I think you target this 40-second infantry that hits for four attack. Yeah. Can still take it out. He can still take it out. I think, I think he's going for the PIR. I think that'd be a mistake. I yeah. It's just seven damage, right? Seven and not a lot of stuff left that can directly blitz to the hq that's true but unity um yeah unity is strength i yeah, can see that one could very easily just have ended the game luckily doesn't have one luckily for Nuru, unfortunate for neon and that's with three copies in the deck that's yeah a little bit unfortunate for knowing here however this huge front line is it yamato yeah. lethal uh, Yamato trade away 12 damage, yeah. Yamato is lethal. That is Still has Yamato. time to find it, though. Can start trading away and replacing. Just has to be very, very smart about how he trades away. Oh, decides to go for a key turn over the 15s. Proc's a unit in the support line. Not what you want to see. All his orders are at the bottom, yeah. looks like. Desperate measures. Ooh, wait. Could be game swinging. What is this match? Goes for the Akita. Into the Desperate Measures. And he hit the Red Devils with it. It's the Red Devils. Slight risk in hitting with the Akita first, but, you know, high pressure situation. We totally understand. Oh, 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 oh. The unit. Is that lethal? No. Yeah, it is. Yeah, That's Tano lethal. into Plan West. Unity. Tano Plan West, Unity, and can go for lethal. <laughs> what was that, Neon Holy five. moly. Calculating it first, taking it slow. Wait, what? No, no, he's still got it. He's still got uh, it. Ah, uh, okay, he's playing it that way. And there you go. Red what? Devils in the front line in finishes it off. Neon Five Mother. takes game three, goes two one. This is a best of five, so it's not the end of the series. But what a clutch! Yeah, very impressive there from Noon. Um... That was very back and forth. Yeah, However, both think, could have won that, right? Yeah, but some credit to Nuru. They had a turn one type 93 with this situation. You know, yeah. but I have to ask myself, what would have happened if they played Feigned a turn sooner? What would have happened if they'd done this slightly different? That's slightly different. You know, if they traded into this 4 free infantry instead of this PIR, that would have given them an extra 2 HP. They would have been on 7. That unit hit for 6. Yeah. Trading into that PIR may have been the slight difference that lost in their game. It's these sort of minute details that you don't think about, but they end up coming back and haunting you, you know, 10 years down the line. Yeah, I mean, in the end, it can be one HP that matters in the end, right? So you have to take everything into consideration there. And yeah, I think that face it with the key 83. That was maybe the point where the game... Just swing around a little bit. Yeah. However, Nero still put up a very good fight. Now we have the Jagro Mirror. 
Neon has a pretty solid hand. However, he is going second, and going first can be so important. But once again, oh. no, not finding a one-drop infantry. No. So Neon is able to push up to the front line and prevent this beef wagon, but doesn't go for the push up. Goes for the type ninety. Uh, goes for the signal regiment instead, which could let Nero get two beef oh, wagons. Oh off. my god! Oh my lord! That's what I call a punishment. <laughs> oh. And no, not with the desperate measures here. No desperate measures indeed. What do you do? You do you just go Akita and do nothing, or do you get rid of Type ninety three? I think you get rid of the Type ninety three, and then you can go for the Akita next turn, try and get the fifty fifty, and then push up to the front line. Mm -hmm. But still, very explosive start. I'd like to see Nuru trade, yeah, and then go for the trade, uh, the face damage instead of just going face damage with both. Because then, if you get this Akita 50 50, you're giving up the front line. Yeah. And fingers crossed for no one now. Oh, he hit it. And there you go. No bicycle in the front line, though, due to the, the calculated play. Mido, very strong with three health. Maybe able to keep the front line there from Noro. You could just send I it. Ooh. K83. Yeah, the downside of K83. Yeah, in the, in the mirror matchup is you're also giving your opponent a lot of draw, right? Yeah. However, Type 24 able to pin the KI. Just take advantage of the draw and not get punished by its huge stats. Oh, wow. Neon 5 still having a very strong hand. Also finds a Type 94. So he has two of them now, so he can remove anything that is... A big threat there from Noro. At the moment, not really anything present that would be removed from double surprise attack. Just goes for the pins to prevent two damage there. But Noro also with a good hand, not too bad. Akita, Mido, and he's having the faint retreat again in hand. And the type uh, 98 Kaney. <laughs> Can't forget about the little tank that could. <laughs> There it comes. Oh. Hey! <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it looks pretty cute. It's a cute looking tank. I'm in full support of this. Now, do you think Neon just goes face here? What I find pretty impressive that... Wait, no, no one did go face with a key 83, right? Um, I did believe he? so, Or was yeah. it pinned? I was just wondering where that 14 no, damage it was, came it from. No, it was pinned last signal? time. Signal, yeah, 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 it was pinned, you're right. And uh, it can be pinned again next turn. And this Raiding Brigade able to take out this signal, so we'll be able to stop himself being slowly burnt. But he can also take out this Sendai. If this Sendai comes down, you can respond with this Raiding. It just depends on whether you're more scared of being burnt or whether you want resources now. Sort of, you know, resources oh, now or slow damage. Another very intense match. What I find really interesting that Noro is at 14, although Known did not really touch his HQ so far. Did the power of Signal Regiment. Yeah, and Akita and Maida. No, and it is... takes out the KI. <laughs> Kini. Down to 7. Signal doing work Down there. Down to 5. Down to 5. And still, Noro just having an the chance to pin the K key 83 there, not a chance to kill it. I think this raiding may have to come down, otherwise you're just going to get burnt out. Kill the signal regiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still two Midos waiting in no one's hand. To but no, that. he's saying, you want to race? Let's race. Thinking about it. Yeah. But he lost now, right? No. Uh, ah, yeah, and Mido is having. He's just one credit short of yep. blitzing two Midos into that 3 3. However, there is an Akita. Uh, you put uh, down a unit first and then you hit the Akita. You have a chance of the Akita hitting your unit and ending the game. 
not ending the game. Doing four damage and not quite yeah, ending the game. Yeah, four is one off. And this oh. hands are thirty-five T in hand as well. Yeah. Oh no. It's not already going to win this. Did well, you can send correct? I. You can send I something, but it's still not enough. Send I type ninety-three. Take out both units in the front line. That's your path. You send I one of them. You type ninety-three and pin the other. Then you pass turn. Yeah, that's the only chance to stay alive here. Yeah. Yeah. Considers the Mito instead. Doesn't get hit in the face. Yeah, and also on that. No, okay, signal regiment. You probably want it on the type 94 to set your opponent to one. She then isn't not... lethal. Is there any way out of this? I don't think there is. You have to go for the Sendai. But then you're on two health. You've got a Sendai and raiding. But even then, you're dead to the Mito. There is no way out of this. No, not really. And Neon 5, it looks like he's going to clutch himself a free one. But no, did not go down without a strong, strong fight. Absolutely. Initially, it looks like he had a slow start, but with double, with finding you know the something? other Bethel song. With yeah. one more credit, he could have lived. If he had one more credit, he could have not moved up the raiding and killed his own Type 93, making the Mito not able to kill itself. One more credit and he won this game. And that's GG. Neon 5 takes it. 3-1, the first series. And, wow. and what a series. I mean, these were aggro decks, these were mirrors, but you saw how close this was. It was just, you know, things like coin flips or, or little decisions. And this could have gone very, very differently. And huge credit to both players. I, I think they both played really well. There are a few decisions we weren't completely agreeing with, but usually when you catch up with the players, they're able to explain us and take it through, take us through them. Um, but I think that's all from us for now, and we're going to throw it back to um, Christo and Ollie. You're muted, Christo. I there told myself this time would be different. <laughs> um, we always um, do. We always do. And then we always make the same mistakes. Day in and day out. But what a series that was. Um, you know, looking at it, it comes out as a three to one score. I think it was a whole lot closer than that. I mean, we, we saw the deck list being so similar as uh, Bubbles was mentioning in the wrap up there, a few little coin flips here and there. But in reality, it was a very, very tight series and a little bit of a different draw or one extra credit could have made all the difference there. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm gonna say this. It was a more entertaining series than I expected, right? I mean, I expected the aggro matchups to kind of be like, whoever gets to buff their tank first wins, right? But no one five completely buckling that in first uh, in the first game. And I would say like, you know, kudos to him for, for staying cool with that buffed unit in his face and just going like, you know what? I'm going to take an extra, you know, three damage. I'm going to double buff my tank because that is going to be able to trade out, you know, multiple of these single buff tanks from him. And he was just... Being able to keep his composure and make himself, uh, you know, come out victorious in that game, you know, through that comeback. And then game two, that was kind of Brit Air being Brit Air. And, you know, I've been trying out this new Brit Air deck list. And the the amount of times I've been like, you know, where are all my units? And then all of a sudden I have like eight bombers. Um, there, there have been too many of them, you know, like, and so I'm not surprised that he was able to find what he needed to find to, you know, close out that game. Of course, finding that Empire Strikes was um, extremely important for him. That could have gone another way if he wasn't able to find those cards, but in the end, he did. G game three, very close game, but I feel like this is also why Noen is known for U.S. Legions, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the guy that, you know, has championed this deck as one of the best decks in the game. And I just felt like he found the correct lines, he was he was able to work himself himself way back uh, back into that game, and you know this is why he's known for that deck. Um, I would I would honestly say I'm probably the most scared of Noen Five playing U.S. Legions out of any deck, right? Um, and then finally, you know, nice job from 
Noen in that in that final game and just from both, but but especially Noen for finding kind of the correct line on the second to last turn, right? He could have potentially made a misstep there. We were seeing both hand, hands um, and it was a it was a very close, you know, one credit short type situation. And and you know, we we talked about it before where somebody like Noen is uh, you know, a veteran of cards tournament play. You mentioned keeping his cool, having their game plan sorted and saying, Yeah, that that's fine, you do your thing. I feel good about where I'm at. Uh, started off the series by taking a, a surprising turn, going ahead and banning um, not banning the Brit Air deck, which everybody sort of expected and it turns out that came to bite him in that one game but i mean the other games you know um just the the little nuance the little things that you saw um no one do in the way of being that established veteran player and then noru showing a little bit of his uh of his you know um kind of rookie experience here um you know playing a bit slowly in that first game not using uh, blitzkrieg when he had the opportunity to do so probably waiting for that 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 kill turn uh, and just not playing aggressively there and then kind of going the opposite direction in game three playing aggressively going face despite the fact that no one had a, a full board kind of facing off against him so uh just kind of those those little small plays that at the end of the day are, are game changers so i think it's going to be interesting to see noru continue on obviously they're going to be competing oh, yeah. in a third place game today but also just them continuing to develop their uh their skills so uh let's bring up the bracket actually and take a quick look uh, based yeah, on what's coming up next year. One thing, one thing as well, right? No one five banned U.S. Legions, right? I, I think he recognizes that that is a really good matchup into a lot of these decks, right? I mean, I think I think Brit Air is probably the worst matchup for that deck because of the bombers and how how they can bypass those legions, right? But against the the, the other aggressive decks, they tend to spam out a lot of units, block access to their HQ, and do pretty good. So. Uh, but as we look at the bracket, of course, we see there Noah Five securing himself a spot in the grand finals match. There, um, who will he face off uh, against? Will it be Artemisia or Tang Tang? Uh, by the way, both players that were playing in you know the finals uh, of the OCC, right? So these are the hot, hot players in the game right now. Super excited to see that series and which one of them is going to drop down to the third place match, playing off against Noro. That's going to be um, coming up next. Absolutely, Ali. And to your point, talking about the um, banning, you know, that, that Legion's list, I think to a certain point you realize, okay, I need to win three games. That also means I need to prevent my opponent from winning three games. So if I if I let that Brit Air deck go through, I lose to it. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to lose one game. All good, because I know that I can win with the rest of my list. So sometimes it's that aspect of let's let one through. That's fine. But I'm going to be able to, to lock it down with the rest of my list. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, it just shows the confidence he has in that USA Allegiance deck, right? He doesn't even want to face it himself because he knows the potential. And maybe he's thinking like, okay, you know, no one knows how to play this better than I do, right? But if they have a great game, if they manage to find those lines that, you know, I feel like I'm the only one seeing, they're going to give me trouble on this deck. So I'm going to get it out of the way. So it's going to be super interesting to check out the bands in the coming series because, you know, that's going to be telling if, if is this a, a, you know, a thought process that is shared by other people and just know it. And, you know, again, that community kind of preparing together did more of one of than one of them have that conversation and have that thought. So we're going to check that out. In just a second, Ollie, you're pulling double duty here, calling the uh, Artemisia Tank Hang game with Darkness. So uh, I'll, I'll flip it over to you. Thank you. All right, we're back. And now I'm joined by Darkness in your brand new streaming room. It's looking uh, really good. Thank you so much, Ollie. Uh, I wasn't able to stream a lot recently because I moved to a new city. Uh, started a new job and well i have to put in the extra work the extra hour because i'm fresh and new in this job but i can't wait to produce more content in this room it's finally ready and done and i'm very happy to use this now uh, to cast with you Yep, and we're about to watch Artemisia take on Tang Tang. And I mean, there's not a whole lot more for us to discuss in terms of the decks. We know what decks these guys are bringing. Uh, just thinking about the players themselves, who do you have kind of going into this and what are you looking forward to in, in this matchup specifically? 
Please, Oli. Uh, they are both very high skilled Chinese players. They are both proven to be experts in tournaments. They are bringing the same deck lists. So it's it's like Jake and me playing against each other using the same deck lists in the tournament. Um, it's it's not a, it's not like I have a favorite. It's more about enjoying it, e enjoying uh, the clash of those two player. Yeah, I mean, uh, we see it there. The bans are in, and this time, uh, no one followed No and Five in banning out the U.S. Allegiance deck, but. Instead, they went for the Brit Air deck from each other. So this is going to be basically a pure uh, mirrored deck lineups from these players. Now, what are the most interesting kind of clashes of these two deck lineups that you can see, right? Um, like, let's say we avoid all mirrors. What is the most fun? I really want to see the German deck go up against the US Legion's deck. Yeah, I, I guess this would be a lot of fun, but uh, well, the German deck against J Acro is is a little bit more explosive too, um, because both are really fighting hard for the front line, and both are able to close the game really fast. So, and 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 both have having like abilities. The German uh, combined arm stack is able to fight back the, into the front line. And the Sendai Regiment is able to get rid of the big buffed tank. Uh, so this would be a very interesting matchup as well. But I agree with US-German matchup. Uh, this is looking very interesting too. I feel like I feel like if you draw desperate measures into that German combined arms deck, you can cause a lot of problems. Um, that was at least my experience, you know, when I, when I played that game into Japan, right? It, it, two things you yeah. do not want to see coming out of your enemy's hand. It is the Sendai Regiment and it is Desperate Measures. <laughs> and I felt like whenever that happened, I just lost. So I feel like that's a matchup that kind of has a you just lose type of card draw on the Japan side. And I don't really see the same on the on the German side outside of just, you know, the Japanese player also, you know, the player playing Japan also not finding any of his early game units. Well, both both decks are com nearly only early game units. So I'm expecting everyone to be able to play something during the first two turns. It's super rare that with those decks you are unable to do something early on. They are designed to uh drop three units in the first two turns and yeah. usually this happens um one other kind of thought that just flew into my mind you know just thinking about the the deck lineups and the matches we're about to see how important are red devils I mean, if, if you really think about it, if you're, if you're able to establish Red Devils into the front line, it is a 1-3, right? So it, it dodges most of the single attack trades and it is a credit drain. Both are resources, you know, that you want to keep if you are playing as an aggressive player. And the Red Devils, I feel like, might be one of the kind of crucial cards in terms of swinging some of these matchups, similar to what we saw in, what was it, game uh, number three. Uh, between yeah. No and Five and Noro. Well, I think uh, Red Devils and United We Stand are the two cards uh, giving the player using US uh, one advantage. Not not only because you are able to trade maybe one for two uh, with the Red Devils, but because of the tempo. Your opponent has to use more credits, and if he needs to attack with two units that are additional two credits while just clearing the front line, if the Red Devils are able to get there in time, this is so massive against J Agro and the combined arm stack. So, Red Devils are very, very important. And of course, United We Stand is also very important. This can clear out a 22nd infantry unreachable for anything else while giving you 
ramp, what is kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, Brit, Brit Air is using this credit advantage, this tempo as well. Uh, but we might overlook uh, that US Poland is using the same mechanic. Uh, of course, it's a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. There are not as many one credit units like, like the Swordfish or the Gladiator. Um, and the Chocolate Boys are a little bit too slow. For example, against J. Agro. But they, they are just there to, to waste some time um, to yeah be like cannon cannon a uh, cannon and footer cannon fodder cannon fodder cannon yeah cannon fodder cannon and footer that was a very german way of saying it <laughs> no it, it's actually it's actually the german word like yes. the, the german word is cannon and footer yeah and it's, it's it, it sounds like i'm i'm just pronouncing cannon footer uh, <laughs> do you know what the german nice word is? so what fatbisser <laughs> that is that is canon in Icelandic. So you got you you have all the languages. Everyone's kind of you know canone, canon, and then Iceland goes fatlbisa. <laughs> okay, I just <laughs> understood fatlbisa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is this even close? No, fat. It, it's like F A L L. B Y S S A Fuck Bissa. Whoa, it fuck this this up. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't. I can't. It's too hard. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I just want to give uh, people a heads up. We're not just uh, vamping here for no reason. Uh, one player is having a difficulty uh, connecting into the challenge, so we're just waiting for them to uh, get <laughs> into the game. Uh, Mark just called us out. It sounds like you're cursing darkness whenever you try and say this, uh, but you know, uh, he is not. I feel like I'm, I'm cursing. There we are. There we are. Oh, look at this. Japan versus Japan here in the first match between Tang Tang and Artemisia. And I think both players were hoping to get their Japan deck into the opposing German deck here. Maybe, maybe. I, I don't think you really want to get into the mirror matchup uh, be because it's definitely a 50-50 and usually whoever is going first has a little advantage. Although uh, this Panzer Befehlswagen maybe changed that. So, yeah, uh, Tang Tang going in to the front line with Calvary Regiment and Panzerbefehlswagen is looking like a massive start. But obviously, uh, the first Signal Regiment having on field from turn number one is huge. <laughs> oh no, Tang Tang just got the second Raiding Brigade. Yeah. So now he's able to build up more pressure or even block more uh, front line with the Bicycle Regiments acceptable place yeah uh, i mean do you do you go for like the attack here i feel like you attack um or, or maybe maybe he is thinking also i mean turn three it does open up the potential for the akita which we see in the hand here from artemisia um and that could be beneficial to have more units on the field uh, against that uh, akita regiment um, yeah because he is probably planning to play um, the first, uh, the second Reading Brigade next turn. Yeah. So having more units on the field could be, could be very beneficial. Well, he's opening up a little bit against desperate measures, but Artemisia they don't have it. So now it's just the play, killing the first signal regiment, going into the front line. This looks really good for Tang Tang here. It does. Um, let's see what Artemisia is able to do here. I mean, he's going to be dropping the Hangchul. He's going to be buffing up the Type 93. It's now a 4-4. And I mean, that is a considerable threat. But there is a Sendai yes. Regiment that is able to deal with it if uh, Tang Tang so chooses. But I don't think he necessarily needs to just yet. I, d I, I think he does. I think he should. 
Well, he, he could just pin it and go into the front line, play maybe the 22nd Infantry or just sending the uh, Akita regiment into the front line. Well, I, I don't really like all of those options, but going for the card draw looks looks very solid here. Um, the most important part is now the front line because Atom, yeah. Part of he needs to he needs to deploy the twenty second infantry regiment first. Yes, thank yeah. you. <laughs> He wouldn't have had credits otherwise, for anybody wondering, uh, he wouldn't have had cre credits otherwise to actually make it into the front line and get that single card draw. Yeah, and now it's going to be Sendai Regiment. Yeah, on the Type 93, and that means, you know, if he so chooses, he can, I mean, he can run the Bicycle Regiment into this, but yeah. this, this would have also created a more favorable trade situation for the Whirlwind on the next uh, turn. So Sendai that Type 93, of course, get rid of it. Wow, look at that. Akita able to block more front line and the double 22nd infantry. Ooh, the desperate measures looking so good in, in order to control the board. Tang Tang. Tang Tang really needs to, to get rid of those 22nd infantry regiments. Akita regiment is brave, so. Oh, but Artemisia's Akita takes face. He, he was probably wanting to to see that 22nd Regiment uh, actually leave the field. Because yeah. now, such a favorable situation with the Whirlwind and another Whirlwind. It's going to be a tough time targeting, uh, trading this out. But Sendai off the top allows Artemisia to take control of the front line again. He can play a Type, 93, uh, type 94 as well. The Sendai top deck able to control the front line again. So he's going to find more card draw and finding Wind for himself. Oh, another Sendai regiment. You can Sendai the Sendai to get back the Wirbel. <laughs> and and when that Wirbelwind comes back on the field, it's gonna have Blitz. Um so but look at that. That is a big whirlwind all of a sudden. Man, that Henschel. So huge. This is a lot of damage. Five damage and drawing. <laughs> oh, it looks so similar what both, both players are playing. Well, he's able to kill. He's able to clear everything. Look at that. Artemisia. Able to trade into the Wibblewind with everything. And after that, using the Desperate Measures. He, he needs to, to pop the Sendai Regiment first. So the Desperate Measures is killing the... the well, not killing, but damaging the Wibblewind. Is he going yeah, for it? I think looks, so. Yeah, looks like it. So it's going to be two, four, and then... yeah. Look at that desperate measures. Killing killing three units, damaging two more. Wow, we're getting the back. back. Do you play Mito? No, he's just going going to attack. Wow. That was a massive, massive turn by Artemisia. I think that's probably one of the most impressive turns I have seen out of a, a Jagro deck, uh, especially in a mirror. That was an awesome turn to watch. Yeah, this was this was really nice to to witness. Sender Regiment clearing the front line. He's able to pin and just going into the front line attacking. Now he he chooses the path of the most potential damage. Both players are running out of cards now. It's it's <laughs> getting even closer. Yeah. And well, bicycle becoming... regiments, bicycle regiments were clearing the front line. Uh, Mito will take the front line. What is he doing with his with his tank? Would you just trade into the other buff tank? Yes. Yeah. And I think I think that's interesting, right? Um, 
he recognized you know the potential of losing it even if he kept it in the back line and you know felt like it was more important to just get all buffs off the field instead of leaving it alive and it, well, he probably would have been caught out you know by the desperate measures because Tang Tang can, if he wants, get rid of that Mido in the front line and have a Panzer 35T in the op, uh, in the face of his opponent uh, at the end of this turn. So, well I played. Believe, I, yeah, I believe this is a good desperate measures. Yes, reducing the hand card so Enigma won't pay off. He's able to maybe even using Sendai Regiment to deal pot potential three damage. Total five this turn to the HQ and maintaining three units on the field. Yeah, the center regiment like is, is damaged now. Yeah, he's he's doing it. But what is uh, what is Artemisia going to do against it? One top deck is is not enough. Well, he's not dead yet, but he is very, very close to being out of this first game, out of a potential five, a key to regiment coming in as well, pouring on the pressure. That Sendai is going to be moved up, I would expect. Also, I mean, it's not going to give back a guard or anything. No, keeps it in the back line. Not threatening lethal then next turn. Well, the Akita regiment oh. is. Oh, <laughs> the 33% hit, not killing a single unit. I mean, it, there, there's, a, there's a Werble Wind under that Sendai, right? Yeah. So if that Akita had hit the wor had hit the Sendai, that Whirlwind would have come into play and had Blitz, and he would have been able to control the front, front line again and wiping. So she what? again was eleven credits. Oh my Just enough. God! Artemisia with the top oh. deck. Wow. An interesting strategy. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that that top deck. I was thinking about it, like how is he able to come back? And I was only thinking about yeah, eleven credits, Sheen double tech. No matter the the unlucky Akita hit from before, but man, wow, that was one of the all time greatest Jagro matches that I have seen. Um, both players played extremely well, um, but. I thought Tang Tang had it. I thought he had yeah. it. There it was, was one so card. close. But yeah, the, she the Sheen top deck with 11 credits, 8 damage. It it's a lot. It's huge. And you always need to be aware of the, uh, of the Sheen. This is one strength of uh, J Agro. It's so explosive and always finds a way to kill you. And look at that, US against Germany. Wasn't this what you asked for, Ali? Yes. This is what I want to see. I want to see if Tang Tang is able to win this one out. He's not going for the Red Devil. I think he's going for it next turn. But Dude, I mean... Put it into the front line, maybe. Well, I guess it's smarter to go for the 32nd Infantry because they're able to trade better into the front line. They have more damage. And Red Devil has, has Blitz. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting, though. I, I wonder why he didn't use the Jäger Regiment yet. But maybe he's just going to uh, prevent trading? No, I still don't really get it. I'm not sure, but at least he's going to be able to get the Panzer 35T out as well this turn. Um, so, I mean, it is pouring on the pressure, but I would say definitely alternative lines were available. Now, whether or not they would have been better, I don't feel you know confident to assure the, uh, people of, of one thing or another in that regard. Yeah. Even even with this trade from the Henschel into the, one of the 35, uh, 32nd Infantry, the Red Devils can come into play and actually, you know, fully trade out this turn. Mm, no, Unity is strength. They don't, they don't have enough credits to kill the tank now. Oh, no, no. It, this is to protect the tank, he traded away his Henschel. Yeah. And this, this was really smart. Not only, yeah. yeah, 
getting rid of everyone trading into the tank, killing it, but also reducing one infantry, weakening unity strength. So now this puts a lot of pressure on tank tank here. Yeah, this is. Uh... Oh, this... Well, I quest questioned the play before, but the three five tank in the front line is looking huge. <laughs> yeah, and oh, a combined arms as well can make it even bigger if he so chooses. And with that, and he can he can put that on the Hummer. Yeah, he that puts that gonna be massive. It's three three with fury, nine damage. And he can he can drop the Panzer thirty five T and trade out the Hellcat. So there's yeah. no response, and this is the strength of this German deck. Win or lose by turn four. Well, maybe turn five, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's looking. I mean, I would argue that this game is over at this point, right? I mean, underground, underground State can throw that Hummer back and it may buy him a turn. He's still going to take five damage to face um, without anything being played next turn, putting him down to three. And, you know, that way he can do it is just healing you a little bit too slow for him to be able to keep up with the pressure that is coming out of Artemisia right now. Could drop Red Devil and we can Unity Strength onto another and trade out the Humber. It's it's not over yet. Artemisia is running out of cards, yeah, look at that. Of course going into the front line he has to to attack. Maybe he he needs to kill the five one unit here in order to protect his his little tank. Yeah. But now ah uh, the Legion guards are coming into play. But do they? I mean, this is so awkward from a credit perspective, right? Because if he has six credits, he's able to take the front line again. If he's not able to take the front line, there is a potential Hummer in the back line that can be buffed and has Fury. And, and that's just so, so, so dangerous. So kind of, he has to play the Legions to get those two guards in play. Or well, an underground state is better because it gives you one guard and sending back the other tank. Rem uh, getting rid of the buff. Now the Humber is getting <laughs> getting buffed. Able to kill the legions. Uh, attacking for three. It's getting really close. It is. Red Devils. Um, I mean, okay, okay, okay. Plan West. Red Devils. He can trade out the Hummer and have two guards up. So... This is looking fine. <laughs> uh, if you're not looking at the two HP left from the HQ. Yeah, everyone watching at home, put your hand over the, the HP total <laughs> of the US uh, headquarters and just think, oh, how, how do I feel now? Oh, I feel pretty good. You know. This is not what they want to get. Well, that definitely. Is... It's definitely not what they want to get. Hey. No, no, no. But I mean, I mean, these units, they can grow over time. They can become a threat. But I feel like I feel like I definitely spoke too soon. Now this is starting to get way more even. And I think as soon as Tang Tang establishes himself in the front line with a couple of units, then he is very, very likely to finish this game off. Yeah, it's looking... It's starting to look awful uh, for Artemisia. I just checked the deck list again, and Artemisia are not running Enigma. 
you know the nuances between the deck lists. Mm -hmm. Tang Tang and Artemisia, they are not running Enigma. So uh, Enigma is the most powerful card against USA because USA legions are having so many cards all the time. But now without this powerful draw engine, uh, Artemisia is lonely grinded to death, it looks like. Yeah. And how, you know, this, this basically ended up being as close as it could be. Tang Tang surviving with 2 HP on his HQ, now getting that up to 5. And the board in hand is starting to look fairly dire here for Artemisia. And I feel, I feel you know, embarrassed. I proclaimed the game was over, but then it wasn't. Well, I, I was looking I was looking at the potential cards. Heinkel is a draw engine. So what's interesting, I yeah. feel like um in this matchup in particular, um against US Legions, one of the most kind of powerful cards you can potentially have um as well is is breakthrough, removing the guard off of all of the legions. And no one seems to be running that anymore in this uh, combined arms deck. Even Absolutely a single right. copy of it would be extremely, extremely powerful. And and I wonder, I wonder, also, you know, we're seeing a couple people bring a single Flampanzer, but maybe you should sneak in like a sudden strike there. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe at that point you're ruining the deck and you're ruining, you know, the potential to to deliver damage or, or draw the correct cards, but could have helped in this uh, situation. Could have helped. But we are all tied up here. Yeah. One to one. And we just saw US Legions, as close as it was, managed to find enough cards to hold that combined arms deck at bay. And, and I think that kind of, I win some points back, you know, um, for, for at least correctly predicting that. Yeah, <laughs> I give you that. But on the other, on the other side, um, Artemisia now could just play USA into a relatively good matchup, I believe. Well, Artemisia is using... Germany again, this time against Japan. We we also point, pointed out this matchup uh, because I, I was expecting this to be very interesting. And look at that. Tang Tang killing out the Hamba with one cavalry regiment going again into the front line. Yeah. So many Hambers. This is just four, <laughs> four of those little tanks. Ah, uh, it's it's in full army, like in tank yeah. regiment. But I mean, it's still difficult because of the units that Tang Tang has been able to find. Right, he can trade one of them out, um, and that Akita regiment is going to be a three-one in the front line, trading out the golden one. Of course, you know you don't yeah. you don't let your opponent have yeah. bling on the field. A second 56 Jäger which you meant, look at that, reducing the operation cost to zero, then the Henschel, this is plus three, plus three, and this Humbra is eating the Akita hit, still survives, now it he ha uh, they have to attack into the HQ, can't really trade everything, but the damage is done. No, I mean, that was massive. That Akita proccing right there. Panzer 35T is more than likely going to get played here. Oh, the, uh, it doesn't have any infantry. Uh, the infantry would have been such a crucial thing to have on the board right now, but slightly, slightly slower turn, but he's going to trade in with the Type 93. Yeah. Yeah, pin and trade. Ooh, the Hankel. The Hankel, another... 
like the card draw mechanic here. Yeah. It's uh, nice to have. On the other side, Tang Tang is having Fright and Retreat, and as Bubbles pointed out earlier during the first match, Fright, Fright and Retreat turn six is very scary. Yes. And I believe that's exactly what we're going to see come out here. Now the question is just what can Artemisia draw in in that like slight dip in tempo, you know, where you have to spend your full turn playing Feigned Retreat and have to wait one turn? Um, is he able to find, you know, another Henschel um, where he can drop another Jaeger Regiment, get another 4-6 uh, Hummer? or 3-6 uh, Hummer? 3-6? Three, three, no, 4-6. Four, 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 three, five. Yeah, 3-5 or 4-6, yeah. Ah, the Heinkel coming into play. Just cost so many credits. Yeah, I wonder if the 22nd Infantry Regiment couldn't be better here. It's fight and, fight and retreat, definitely. Yep. And now the clock has been started for Artemisia to get something done here. Well, there, there is something. Look at that combined arms. It's plus Massive. four, plus four. It's it's not three five, not four six. It's five seven. Yeah, and zero op cost. That is all going to get delivered to face. And he was looking for another combined arms for a potential lethal there, but does not find it. So now is the question: Is Tang Tang able to find seven damage to trade into that Humber before the start of next turn? There's two. Sende could work. But this is just four damage. No, this won't do. And no. As soon as he sees the sheet and hit the hand, he instantly surrenders. He knew his fate was sealed at that moment. And combined arms, combined arms operations, just showing their strength here in cards. That was a massive humber. It, it it was the last humber. He watches. He watched all of his friends, of his Hummer friends, going to die and got his revenge. Well, in Sunday Regiment top deck could have changed the field. But sometimes you need the Sheeden, you get the Sheeden. Sometimes you need the Sunday Regiment, but it's still Sheeden. <laughs> top deck last turn. Oh, this was fast. Tang Tang and Amnesia are... Now, in the next match, it's USA against Japan. I, I do believe US, US has the edge here just a little bit because it's not going second. With USA against Japan going first, it's awful to play against. But on the other side, if Japan is going second, still able to get it. USA is not finding anything. Oli, Artemisia is not having any one credit infantry unit, no unity nope. strings. And, I mean, let's say, let's say he drops the plan west next turn, which he probably will, given the pressure that is being put on right now. There's a desperate measures in hand that is just going to clear that right out. Yeah, but also, desperate measures is reducing credit slot what is really hurtful if you're going second i don't believe tang tang is going to sacrifice that i mean he's gonna have two bicycle regiments in the front line that are going to be buffed up with zero operating costs okay he, he just did it <laughs> yeah i mean so I, I would agree with you if he had units on board like akita regiments or anything that you know cost to operate but just because of the hand that he has right now, this game is over. It is over next turn. Like, well, 10 damage in the front line team. reduced to 6, but there is an Panzer 35 T. This so that is game's exactly done. 8 damage, and this match is done. And Artemisia wins. What? Oh. <laughs> Um, I think, like, I think I'm not wrong when I say that that is the fastest tournament game I think we've ever had. And I feel like a, just a recurring theme that we're seeing here 
is zero operating cost can put you into god mode. Yeah, zero operation cost is definitely a thing. Well, most of the zero credit cards got got nerfed or changed uh, over over the days, but zero operation cost uh, is is not touched a lot. No, and we are now in game number five. And I'm looking at the stream, and the stream is on a 15-minute delay, and they are in game number two. So well, that look at the combined you... arms. It's turn two, three, five Hamber in, in the front line with zero operation cost. Well, Artemisia, they are able to to play United. We stand killing the credit they just got gives them the Hellcat. He's able to play an attack with it next turn. But he's down to eight. Ooh, I think that's a risky, risky move. Negron State or or Hellcat. Hellcat is just getting rid of the tank. That's now you're getting true. getting a guard as well. I think that's even better. And that's a combined arms. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. But uh, you. You couldn't do anything against it. Oh, so, so brutal. But will he be able to weather the storm? That's the question. He's got a plan west, and he found that we can do it. But is it going to be enough? I mean, he can't. He can't drop plan west now, right? Because that's just going to get tr double traded, and he's going to take two to face. I think oh. he has to play plan west. If, well, if this he, game... he, could, he could kill the Humber. And the turn after, play double plan west. If there is another plan, uh, turn after. Yes, if there is another turn after, that is uh, the crucial thing. But right now, no platform, no tank platform on the field for tank tanks. So not a whole lot of targets to take those buffs. Of course, combined arms and the Henschel both buff tanks. But there it is. That Humber is starting to look dangerous. I mean, double plan west, that's going to be four units he's only able to take care of three of them but i mean at least it's four gods but three hp is not looking great and the second panzer three h able to to find what you need but first the humber is going to kill two guards and this one is killing the third yeah, that Jaeger Regiment coming one turn too late because just having all of those credits needed to operate those units um, at his disposal might have potentially helped him um, find a better position here. But man, this is a close one. So what do you do now? Do you sacrifice your final guard here or do you even, do you even go as far as sacrificing your Hellcat? Sacrificing the Hellcat, I like that. The other option would be we can do it and the guard survives with one HP, but the Henschel is able to kill that. So Hellcat into the front line and playing more units on the field looks like the way. Although we can do it is giving you three extra HP, so uh, maybe I would have went with we can do it. But of course, keeping the one guard alive both both know each other decklist and Tank Tank is, having, <laughs> is, is playing the Comet. So you need to keep the guards alive. He's not just playing the Comet, he found the Comet. What was that? The Panzer 35T? Yeah, Panzer 35T to to kill he, he's getting rid he's getting rid of the guard. And able to Deal one more damage or getting into the front line. I, I'm i going to say, you know, if, if Artemisia manages to somehow pull this back, we just got like two insane combined arms versus, oh, and look at that, another Henschel. That, that Henschel is going to buff the 2-4 body of the Panzer 3H, and I don't think Artemisia is going to be able to deal with that. There's no guards off the top of his deck. Can he block it? No. 
Maybe maybe he can block the front line, but the comet the comet is always going to be delivering damage. Yeah, the comet is the biggest problem here. Oh, the pearl buffed itself, so four six in the front line really nice to have. But maybe just Comet attack into the HQ and Hanshul attack into HQ, reducing the HP to 1. So Comet one turn after is enough even to to kill him through the second we can do it. Well, looks like he really wants to <laughs> to get into the front line. California Regiment, is this doing anything? Mm, no, I mean, Underground State is there. I believe, I mean, that is an Intel card. He could Tarno and then Underground State. That gives him a guard. Underground State itself gives you a guard. You don't yeah. really need Tarno and you don't have the credits. No, you don't. Kill one, one of the infantry regiments yeah. to get two guards. That's true. But I agree, he, he needs he needs a guard. So maybe trading both units into the front line, underground state onto the Humber to get to get a guard down. Yeah, I mean that's that's really interesting. Unfortunately for him though, that's not gonna be enough because those Hanshals are gonna be able to kill the guard unit and uh, that comet damage is gonna come through, so it's gonna put him down to one. Yeah, but it's a turn well. He goes for the California and two units in the front line. He really wants to start blocking that front line. Now, I think any type of buff here for that Humber is going to be enough for Tank Tank to end the game. It's it's the comet is enough. It's five damage. Oh, it's true. Right That's it. That's it. Tank Tank wins. I was thinking way too complex, but it turns out you can just attack the HQ, and that's how you win. Yeah, it's amazing. Fighters can reach over the the front line directly into the support line of the of your opponent. That was a that was a hard fought game though, and I mean, I think if Artemisia finds a couple of those early game units, I I mean, in both the games that we saw him play the the U.S. Legions, um, he wasn't finding anything. He, he, did, yeah. he didn't find any of his early game. Yeah, that, that's the biggest problem. Where if you're unable to play turn one, if you're unable to to drop anything turn two, uh, against all aggro lineups, they're just building up so much tempo, so much pressure. It's it's way too hard to come back if if you lost the momentum. Yeah. Well, that was an absolutely bonkers series. Uh, some insane matches. But let's bring it on over back to the host desk uh, with myself and Crystal. Wow, Ollie, I, I learned something new there. Attacking the HQ <laughs> is how you win the game. Blew my <laughs> mind. It is, it is. Sometimes you don't need to go for those uh, super 200 IQ plays. It's just enough to deploy a unit and attack with it. Um, but this is what happens. You know, this is what happens when you're when you're casting and you're trying to see all the different lines. And you're trying to figure everything out um, while, you know, yelling and trying to make things exciting. But um, yeah, I I got to say, you know, that, that Japan versus Japan matchup is just one of the craziest things I've seen. And, you know, that series... I, I worried that we would get, you know, that all our games would be like that four turn win and we would just basically be, you know, you and me wrapping up right now. Thank you everyone for watching. But like, no, we're getting like really entertaining slugfests out of these guys because they are really good pilots of these decks and they are able to solve problems that most people on ladder aren't able to solve. So uh, this has been awesome so far. It's exactly that. And you just mentioned, you know, you've got a cast, you're checking out all the lines, you're trying to trying to keep things energetic and exciting. But I don't think you had to work that hard to make that last series so exciting because of exactly those reasons you spoke about. You know, you, you called game two a little bit early, but that's exactly the scenario that comes up, right? These players have, we talked about in the war room, we talked about it leading up to this. They know these decks so well. They know these matchups so well. So they end up in a situation where they go, yeah, my my HQ health doesn't matter because I have my guards up. I have my, a 
hand full of cards. I have all the tools I need to come back from this. We saw uh, Tang Tang do that in game two. Mm -hmm. And at the same time in game one, you know, we saw Artemisia just top deck a win. So, you know, a lot of times you can have all the best intentions in the world. You can have your game plan sorted up, but if you don't draw the cards, in the right time in the right place you may not be able to pull through that and again it just comes down to these players being absolute pros knowing how to use their resources in the given matchup and that's where we see all these nail biters these absolute slugfests when you know aggro versus aggro can very much be that four turn win sometimes yeah and i mean i would say a lot of players would have surrendered Mm -hmm. sitting in that situation that tang tang was in with two hp on his on his hq you know s staring down all that pressure they would have just been like um you know ah screw this ah surrender right but i mean like that's why they don't have 70 percent win rates like these players do um so i mean just kudos to to all of them for amazing play because uh yeah this was awesome let's let's bring up the bracket because we now know what our grand finals matchup is going to be and we know what our third place matchup is going to be so it is going to be artemisia taking on the well relative newcomer only six months since he started playing the game noro us is the i don't know how to i'll call him noro because that's really yeah. um it's, it's a nice little nickname but then in the grand finals it is going to be tank tank taking on no in five and i'm i'm looking at that as a huge match because tank tank has really been kind of challenging that that top dog spot in the in the chinese community right well we saw hui hui come back last occ and kind of you know say hey i haven't left um but but Tang Tang has been vying for that spot alongside No and Five that kind of took the torch from Hui Hui at that point. Um, and then Artemisia has been, you know, just that one step away from, from, you know, securing the series wins over these guys. So Tang Tang versus No and Five truly is uh, a battle for, you know, supremacy within the Chinese community. You've got No and Five defending their Open 10 championship. You've got Tang Tang coming off uh, a loss in the grand finals to Artemisia in the last OCC. I mean, you, you've got two absolute titans who are on fire right now, going to go head to head. And then you've yes. got, you know, that relative newcomer who's looking to, to find their foothold in this as well. There is no lack of talent coming from that Chinese community. So it's going to be exciting to see how these last two matchups play out, because I think that's going to start sorting out some of that uh, that fight for being top dog. Yeah, um, I mean, I just I think it's awesome. Right, like I just, I just think it, it's awesome, and I think, I think like the Chinese community deserves so much praise for being such a tight knit, supportive group, um, and and really, you know, proving themselves against you know the rest of the community, right? Like, let's be real, they got they got four out of four top spots. This card's open, right? Um, and and they've they've kind of represented themselves as a team, and they're they're a really big team right sure they have a lot of players but their players are delivering results and i'm i'm just super super excited to see you know where this leads to next as cards continues to grow as well you know things like regional regional competitions um, and kind of regional esports structures with you know the chinese champion taking on the the north american and european champions and all that kind of stuff those things become possible and you know, if, if if we have this group, I mean, not just the Chinese community, but everyone else, you know, not the casters, all the top level players, if we have this group to build that regional competition with, uh, I think the, the future for cards competition and cards esports is extremely, extremely bright. Absolutely. There is so many great things going on. I was talking about it at the top of the war room, just with everything else happening, right? That two year anniversary cards, uh, the mobile game coming out, which is going to be absolutely huge to, again, getting that, that sense of community because you're going to have more players who can get access to the game. So that is all going to be a really, really big aspect of what's to come. And I think Bubbles said it really well during the war room where when you're prepping with teammates or in this case, you know, country mates, you don't have to think about, hey, am I going to beat you? Am I not? Let's all just finish in the top four. We'll, we'll duke it out once we get there, but let's plan to be the best we can be and perform well. And we've seen them go ahead and do that here. And I think that as that community starts to grow around the world, I think we're going to see a lot more of that. A lot more players yeah. competing with each other, but only to figure out, hey, what's the best direction to take here? Now let's go crush this tournament. So... Um, as many people know, you know, the uh, the mobile beta, the first ever mobile beta is underway, right? And what was 
awesome for me to see is like this this is the very first build that we put into the hands of players there are plenty of bugs still going on there are plenty of there's plenty of work still to get the game to a polished state that we want to do um a lot of kind of the ui user experience that you guys have gotten used to those are going to be changing in the coming months but what happened within a week of putting that build into the player's hands we had like 15 players in field marshal, you know, grinding it out, you know, just within the mobile beta. And that is a closed environment. And everyone was putting in the work. And I mean, you need to play a lot of games to get go from rank like 25 all the way up to field marshal, right? So uh, there's also passion coming in on the mobile side. It seems to be a good experience. So, you know, we are extremely, extremely positive. But uh, I believe we're ready for the next match. Right on. So we've got our third place matchup coming up next. As we mentioned, relative newcomer uh, Noru taking on Artemisia, who had uh, won the last OCC. So going to be a great matchup. We got Spoos and Bubbles with us to call all of the action. Yeah, thank you, Oli and Christo. We are back. I wasn't Bubbles. actually muted. I was just yeah. doing my, my best Christo impression. So I thought I'd pretend to be muted when I came in. <laughs> I was wondering what you're doing, but yeah, uh, yeah, perfect, perfect. So let's talk a lot about a little bit more, um, or just a, a little bit more about the past season there, um, or the, the past match, um, Tank Tank versus, versus Artemisia. Holy moly, that was a close one. I think both of one could have easily won that, right? That the Japan versus Japan, holy, that was amazing. That Shin top deck there. Oh yeah, my God. I mean, we saw a sheet and top deck earlier, but he only had eight credits, right? So they could only attack of it once. But this time, the sheet and top deck with 11 credits, which is that wow. perfect sweet spot. I'm always wow. scared of running the sheet in because I think, will I ever reach 11 credits? But then, no, you know, reaches 11 credits and finishes the game of it, and, and it pays off big time. Especially when Japan versus Japan aggro are, are meeting, you don't expect uh, the, go, the game to go that deep into turn 11, right? Where you just have to rely on a top deck shit in for lethal. Wow, that was really impressive. But yeah, that's, that was the, the second semi-final. We are both here to cast the, um, the bronze match today, or now, soon. Um, where Artemisia is taking on Noro. So what do you expect from that series, Bubbles? I did, it's so hard to predict. I, I usually love this question, what do you expect? Because there's there's so many different decks against each other. But because the, the nature of the tournament, where we've got four identical decks over and over again, I find it very difficult to predict, personally. Um, I hope we get some good matches. You know, I, I'd like to see the Hummer Mirror again, because I personally, I quite enjoy seeing the Hummer Mirror. And I think it also teaches us a lot about how to apply it to our ladder games for those of us that are playing Hummer. Um, so I'd quite like to see that. I'm going to predict again that both are banning Brit Air, but I, I've got to be careful because I'm already on set to be thrown into the Icelandic Ocean. So I've got to not make any more promises. Um, let's, add, let's add a naked to that if, if, <laughs> if Britain is not being picked twice. <laughs> so I get my, yeah, my reward right. here. <laughs> well, I luckily I know the bands now, so I can agree to oh, that. Because here we lucky. are, both banning you're Brit, lucky. you know. Artemisia may be seeing the game earlier and saying, you know what, I don't want to deal with that. So there you go. And uh, I think pretty much expected so far, right? Is, is there anything here which surprises you? Did you expect anything else? No, not really. I mean, we mentioned it before, and so far we've seen all of the Brit decks getting banned besides one time, and that deck one the only series for Noro there against known five so i think from now on everyone is just going to to ban that brit air and deal with the rest of the decks and i think honestly what could make the difference here is like Noro's being Noro being a little bit limited in his collection like playing no flam panzer for example in the german britain deck so if Artemisia can manage to build a big unit there, as we saw against Known 5 with that 8-11 or 8-10 Panzer 2. He's not having good answers against that, and I mean, that might make the difference in the end. For me, one of the big questions is, is the No Flam Panzer a decision or a lack of collection? Because yeah. you said it's a lack, it might be a lack of collection, but it's only a limited. And I feel like it's a limited yeah. a lot of people get very early on. So I, I'd be very curious to hear from them. 
whether that was an intentional decision, whether it was like a bit of an oversight, or if they just, you know, were, were limited by their collection. Yeah, yeah. Limited should be relatively easy to yeah. to get that at least one wild card out of it and then craft at least one plant panzer. So I, I think it might be a decision. So we take a look at, at the deck list, it's just a short look because we already looked around them and we've already see all of these decks in play so far dude Maybe that k can... the k neither for japan look at them two of them i want to see this pop off i want to see turn one type 93 into turn one turn two k knee and then turn three lethal don't don't ask me where he's jumping from turn two to turn three lethal i just <laughs> i'm believing in it i want to see this pop off okay interesting let's see if we Minute, uh, if, if we can see that one. Um, mm. What else are the differences? So yeah, he's not playing Aradu, he's not playing, but he's playing Yamato. Yamato, he did not find it in the game so far. Do you think it can be? Yeah, I mean, we, we worked out point? earlier that it would have been lethal um, if he managed to get it off the top of his deck. Um, when he had the, the whole units in the support line, it was Yamato and, and he had the game. I believe he won that game anyway. Um, but it was, would have certainly sped the process up. Um, and then another thing, actually, I want to pull attention to is um, times two HEL, or how this Polish 1K order. I've seen a lot of people run one of these, but I think this is the first time I've seen someone in a competitive deck run two. Um, I like this. I, I really like this. I feel like it combos super well with Tano being a 1K intel. Um, well, what about you? Do you feel like two is too many? You should have gone with one or... Yeah, I think the usual difference is just put in the hail over the orb or gel. So these are the two one drops that are the Chinese competitors just switching just yeah. on preference. Um, I don't know. I think I prefer the orb or gel maybe a little bit more over that one because it's just giving your legions units the ability if they survive, they get an additional plus one plus one. I'm not sure if this is better than the orb or gel but i think it's just personal preference right and i think more players are preferring the hail over the other one so maybe hail is a little bit better i don't know what do you think yeah i i think it is um however to look at the you know the differences in the deck i think we now have artemisia's decks ready to look at so you see only the one copy of how does have the karas instead so one less how one karas and then obviously this Japan deck looking a little bit different with the Arados and the the Feind, um, the Enigma. Sorry, this is a little bit more traditional. Um, so I'm curious to see how they match off. Uh, is there anything else here which catches your eye? Uh, not really. The biggest difference has been in the German Brit, like we already mentioned, without playing the Flumpanzer here. Or oh, he said yeah. he's playing Flumpanzer, um, one copy of it. And I'm, I'm not sure if. Is Noro playing Comet in his um, I don't believe so. No, that's also a big difference. And we saw in the last game that Comet can be a good finisher if your opponent is having the front line and you can just fly with the Comet straight to the HQ. Not even Ollie, who saw the hands, did see it coming. So your opponent is very likely also not seeing it because he cannot even see the hand. So that can, can be the big difference in, in matchup price. So I think maybe matchup wise artemisia with a slight advantage here um but yeah i think both players can win this because we saw just one good top deck and the whole game can just swing around i mean i also think having this comment earlier may have pushed um noro to go for this blitzkrieg rush face strategy and and if you have two ways of finishing the game with that it's more likely to push you to be more aggressive and, and that can pay off where you know in the right scenarios of course so it is definitely something which changes the dynamic of the deck. Yeah, also your opponent has to play a little bit different, right? When he knows you have the Comet in your deck, they can, whenever you want to, deal four damage to the face. He needs to guard up when he's playing that US deck, for example. He needs to make sure he has some legions on board. And if he knows you don't have that, he can just flood the front line and knows that you have no way to dealing HQ damage there. Yeah, yeah. and it's especially nice with this... Um... The, these, you know, spoils of wars that you get from the bomber, and then obviously you've got the tank which acts as a spoil of wars. Well, it lets you find the comet in these scenarios where you need it, and in these scenarios where it's completely useless, you just chuck it away. Yeah, 
Absolutely. So we're just waiting for the players to find their match here. I think Artemisia, who just had his semifinals a few minutes ago, needs a little break. So we're just waiting for him to to return and then we can jump into the Bronx match for today. Do you know how many how much money our ranked four and ranked three are taking away today? I think it's a difference of about half a million dollars. So there's definitely a lot at stake. Um, I think it's 200, 250, I guess, if I'm not completely wrong. Uh, I believe it is. Uh, however, we should have it for you in just... There you go. So oh, yeah, no it's problem. a difference of $50. Um, fourth gets 200, and then third gets 250. Um, and then fifth to sixteenth actually get some gold. So myself and Darkness are going to have some gold coming our way. And if there's one thing I know about gold, it's worth more than any amount of dollar. So I think we're the real winners here. Ooh. You know, gold is valuable stuff. Yeah, I have 20,000 in my collection. So what to do with it? What, what can I buy with it? You can buy officer packs. You go full gold collection. Spend a day opening officer packs, an entire stream doing officer packs. Yeah, I opened, I think I, I bought some packs for 5,000 gold just on Friday, I guess. I got one golden, what was it? I got one golden elite out of it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Was it, it was a Golden Comet, really I guess. Golden that? Comet, was it? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm always getting the golden German elites out of it. Like, I, with the last opening, I had the golden Leopold. So, soon we will see full gold German deck from me. Dude, full gold, full elites. That's the dream. You go all elites and all gold. And then right. you just, you get one of like those pimp outfits, you know, like the colorful yeah. suits. Auto win. I mean, you can't lose with such a deck. No, everybody's it's... just instantly surrendering. Is it Golden I... Leopold? Okay, I'm out. The, the only possible counter is a pair of sunglasses. You know, other than that, people are just going to be blinded. Probably, yeah. <laughs> all right. But yeah. And then have you? I assume you've seen all the recent um, balance changes announced. Yeah, some really interesting stuff there. Like the Spitfires getting changed. What I really like. Yeah. Also in a cool way, they're not destroying it completely, but giving it a nice option. Like, you can now have a Fury guy or just a 6-6-4-4 six, six, four, four credits, which is pretty impressive. So they would not killed it completely, made it just a little bit weaker, I guess. I think another uh, change a lot of people are going to be excited for is this uh, California change. Right? Yeah. You know, a, a lot of people... Take a disliking, we'll say, to, to California Regiment. Um, so yes. this change, you know, makes it weaker to orders. It, it should make it less oppressive. Um, yeah, especially in the lower ranks, you cannot imagine. Like we are, we are in 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 our in our area. We are just used to having a lot of removal, like Lion Four Day. We have Annihilation. We have all this cool stuff. But in the lower ranks, you don't know how annoying a California is. Yeah. Like you don't have a lot of removal. You have like a sickle and from the people, that's all you have for Soviets, for example. And it, it can, I, I can feel the pain of new players. They're dealing with California and you can have four of these in the deck. But let's just get into rank number three, uh, match number three here. We see Since Japan the versus are already Germany. At the mulligan. Just a note for new players who, who are looking for a little bit of a boost. Head over to cards.com forward slash decks and there's some, uh, some new improved player starter decks right Spoos? yeah we just created them um a week ago two weeks ago there will also be some follow-up video guides about it that just yep. describe a little bit more in detail or or visualize what to do how to start your start your collection growing what cards you want to look for and i think it should help players a lot like with the improved soviet starter deck we just finished after eight hours of playing i think we climbed to field marshal rank and everyone who's just complaining about cards being a pay-to-win game, yeah, I think that is a good argument against that one. So yeah, cards.com forward slash decks, and then you'll see featured official decks and just you'll find them under there. But back to the event, we see a Hummer into the front line, although mm -hmm. Nero able to trade into it. This front line Hummer has been a real staple lately, but, but Nero finding a way of dealing with it. However, this is still a very, very scary hand. And unless Nuru can find an infantry, this may just get worse. Obviously, the infantry will allow them to dump their whole hand. Yeah, especially okay, because uh... there's also a bomber on the board now yep. and an infantry and a tank and the handshell. That is four different unit types. 
which would be plus four plus four, but good for Noro here, finding the 35T, getting rid of the bomber. Might still see the hand shell trading into 35T with the Panzer II. This is already starting to look a bit, a little bit scary. I imagine we'll see this Sendai come out. Take away that uh, that tank the moment he feels like it. Gonna buy his time a little bit. You know, he may move up the cavalry and then go for the pin. Doesn't go for the pin, saves it. Hoping to get the second one and then use the double pin as a removal tool. But Flampanzer for Artemisia, very useful tool here. Can clear the oh, front yeah. line, push up this 4-4 tank and trade. You maybe keep it for the signal regiment? Yep. Probably, right? Because you don't have that much removal besides double um, double surprise attack. Oh, heresy. I mean, it's not doing that much because that 4-4 tank kills. With that Blitzkrieg, it could be very scary later on. Yeah, I mean, this is one doing... of the reasons. Yeah, it's so scary. So you get in the front line and Blitzkrieg and it's just terrifying. Yeah, he's not doing it for the pincer effect, right? Because... The tank kills all of Noro's units anyways. He's just doing it to get it to the front line and get the Ooh, no, Blitzkrieg look at this on that Fury unit. Turn here for Noro, a very, very yeah. powerful turn. We'll see the Flampanzer come out, and then I imagine we'll see this buff come out as well. But can instantly be removed here by Noro. Can go with the Type 94 and go with the Double Sudden Strike and take it out. Manages to completely remove it. This Type 93 comes out, you can double trade with this unit in the front line. Otherwise, you do risk being completely slaughtered. If a 35T comes off the top of the deck and then you use this Blitzkrieg, it could yeah. just be a, a complete disaster here. Go just damage. for the trade. This is a very risky move. 35T. Oh, and there it is. There it is. Speaking of it, and Artemisia is having the Comet in the deck. And, a and he's having Spoils of, of War. Yeah, two, two ways of searching for it. But Artemisia mm. says, screw that, I'm going for the trade. Interesting, that would have been 13 damage. And Noron not having a lot of healing, uh, also just zero healing. Yeah. That would mean any Comet top deck would be lethal there. And he's having Spoils of War in hand. Interesting. It's a British card, I assume it's a hammer. No? No, it's a parach parachutes. Okay, not getting the value out of the fury as we all expected. That raiding began, that bombing raid, what is that doing? What is under that Sendai again? Ah, the 4-4 the four, four Panzer II, right? Which is now a 1-3 Panzer II. Decisions, decisions. He goes to the front line, the first one getting deployed. Yeah, the Yamato not that great in that spot, only giving one of the units the destruction effect. And now we might see the problem without having Enigma. Surprised like, we didn't see the Yamato come out that turn, just for a little bit of extra damage. And he must use this bombing raid this turn. Now that he's not played that, goes for the trade. However, Artemisia, with Spoils of War in hand, is probably going to be able to find a buff. I, I'd be surprised if we didn't see some sort of combined arm style buff come out. There's the Henschel. There's the Henschel, nice. And with the Hummer down on board, this could be a very quick lethal here with this Blitzkrieg. Yeah, Nora just needs Faint Retreat now or. There's the feint. <laughs> However, will that keep them in the game? It's six. It's 14. 14 damage. But the Henschel... Oh, but no, that, that is that is GG now. With the Henschel hand moves up with the Blitzkrieg, reduces oh. the old cost again. Both players with great top decks there. Feint retreat for Noru, but then the Henschel for the lethal here for Artemisia. And Artemisia taking the lead in that series. However, Tagro who... put up a good fight, I'd say. Yeah, not bad, not bad. And Artemisia also with the, with a great starting hand there, right? With 
with a 3-5 in the front line on turn 2. Not, not bad. Kept up a good fight. Um, but Artemisia with delete now. And as I see, we are already into the next match, are we? Maybe. So that German deck is out for Artemisia now. Yeah, That's we why see the going. Jaguar mirror. Jaguar Interesting, Nuru, Nuru um, preferencing the Jaguar deck over the German deck. Possibly a comfort for them. Artemisia has desperate measures and raiding. Very powerful hand here. However, we do see a, uh, a raiding McGrade for Nuru as well. Yeah, both players with good starting hands here. Going to the front line with it. No. Ah, huh. uh, that's what you don't want to do, right? 35T yeah. without an infantry. I don't know if I agree board, with but... the 35T play. What else would have you done? Just float the 2k? Really? Yeah. Huh. But isn't it important to just have a board there and trade your opponents? I mean, take I mean, your mind... Artemisia is top four, and I'm not, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, take take my, my ideas with a grain of salt. I mean, you have been top eight OCC two times in a row, so. Yeah, I wasn't top 38 this month, though. So I, I couldn't be bothered to try climbing ladder, so no, no bubbles in this OCC. Uh, not playing Which, wise. Which, you huh? know, plus side. I won't be able to lose the Tang Tang in round one. <laughs> now, Artemisia has some decisions to make. You can go for the Desperate Man. You can also, also go for the Raiding and Trade. I think I prefer Raiding Trade. The only yeah. possible weakness to this is it sets up a Signal Regiment for Nero, because you know it'll be safe. Interesting. Trading with the Arado instead. Yeah, um, doesn't make too much of a difference, does it? Uh, no. I think I, pre I prefer Aradu there, because if the raiding goes to the front line, it cannot be traded away from the bicycle regiment. Ooh, key 83. Would be a good play here. You could just go for the bombing raid. Hand. You could go for the, the bicycle and the Panzer 35T. There's a few options here. Oh, but the 94 oh. top deck gets the double surprise attack. And that the is. The surprise attack was really surprising. Cause... Yeah, that was a <laughs> superb top deck. Wow. Did the heart of the cards. However, we do see this raiding in hand. So the raiding can come out, snipe one of these units, and trade into the front line. But this beautiful bombing raid, it just looks so appealing. Yeah, you have to do it. Kill the 1-1 one, one with the 15s, maybe. I think you go for the, the 15th cavalry trade as well. Yep. No, decides to save the resource. Not the worst move ever. Now, this KI-83 cannot come down from Artemisia while these two surprise attacks are sitting in hand. Gonna... Drop it anyway. It will be instantly removed. Yeah, I also expect that. I mean, yeah, at least. And then we now. can see both of these units traded away. Nero just has to decide how. It takes it slow. Very conservative with uh, with their resources. Oh, could have killed both with the raiding, right? Yeah. As he wants to save the raiding for a signal or a mito. Looks like, yeah. Because that's look probably the biggest, biggest problem in the mirror, right? Because it has three hells. It cannot yeah. really trade really well into it. 
This hand from Artemisia is still pretty scary though, because we could easily see Nuru, you know, put a little bit of board state down, see one of them come down like this, and now just go all in on the board. And now we have to see the rating here. Yeah. Rating comes down, goes for the trade. Now I kind of want to see the K knee come out, but you want to put it on the right side. Right side, right side. Yeah, right. Yeah, side. okay. <laughs> we saw we saw them thinking about it. We're like, don't do it. Don't do it left side. She done. Ooh, another one. Oh wait. Bombing rate this turn. Goes to six, six, and but then... if this Sheedon gets dropped down, just next turn you drop the Sheedon hit face. What's Nero doing about it? Nero can't trade into it. Ooh, that Akita might help. Akita may very well help. But goes for the meter instead. Nuru is uh -oh. gonna have to trade their entire board to deal with this, and they're gonna be on free HP. With the errata as well, that's either an enigma or a feint. But the sheeting comes out, hits yep. face. Nothing else to do here. Don't drop the Aradu. Nuru is going to have to Nuru is going to have to triple trade into this, but it's still a difficult position. Now, how do you want to trade into this? I think you trade with the two thirty-five Ts and the fifteenth Cav. You keep the Mito alive, or do you trade into the Mito for that little bit of extra damage? Since he's playing Yamato in the deck, I would expect to the thirty-five T to trade into this. But thinking about it. Hmm. It also has three health. Why would you not keep that one alive? Wants the extra two damage. Wants it now. 15th Cav and a Rado. Finds the feigned retreat. Okay. With this play, he's also having lethal next turn when he finds his own shit in now. But he would have had anyways. Hmm. Interesting. So it's getting very, very difficult. Oh, Beast Rack are not what you need. Not really. And what do you do? Do you trade with the Akita? Do you go face with the Akita? If you go face, face with, the, with Akita. the Akita, you open yourself up to two damage from this Arado. 15th Cav. Oh my god. You want to play as much as you can first and then trade after. Oh, these draws are not great. I think they'll do the no, Warper no, Wind. No, no, no. Wait. Can prevent the Sheedon. Akita doesn't hit face. Warple into the front line. The fits run into the front line. And this. That's game, right? Yeah, no Sheedon top deck possible now. It is possible, but Warper Wind is stopping it. And that's GG. Artemisia. Artemisia. 2 0. Second win. Wow. Nuru, oh. not able to take a game of this Jaguar deck yet. These Jaguar mirrors all go to turn 11. Yeah. Wow. But that Werber went really, you know, paying for itself, saying the game is safe no matter what. And I wonder, I wonder, should Nuru have traded into these bicycles sooner and saved themselves some health? Lose a yeah, little maybe. bit of value, but save a lot of health. I think he kept the raiding brigade um, behind a little bit too long. But didn't even need to use the raiding. Could have used the 15th in conjunction with the 35T to trade yeah. away both. Yeah. So is this the final match? If Artemisia wins the next one, they're the rank 3 finisher of cards open 11. Noro sticks with the Jagru. I like Nuru's commitment to the Jagra. You know, I admire it. Good one with the Feldsbergen here. But no 22nd. No feint retreat in hand. Artemisia gets rid of the 15s, leaving that Feldsbergen on board. Ooh, Diner is a good one. Oh, two Type 98 in the hand there. 
I feel like oh. without Blitz, they're just so slow. Yeah. I feel like that's their main, you know, holdback is just how slow they are. Yeah, they can be really strong with their zero operation cost and being tanks, but then not having Blitz is a really big downside when you play when played on an Injector deck. And Optimizer also with a great hand here, one plan west, and also Unity is strength in hand. Medica Battalion. And Noro also with an insane hand. He found the Signal Regiment. Signal and this uh, Yamato. Maybe we see Yamato playing a big role in that match here. Yeah. Ooh, Artemisia playing in a potential into a potential desperate measures here. Ooh, do I like that play? Decisions, even, decisions. Even bombing rate really good. Yeah. Now. I think you saved the bombing. Fifteens into front line and dive no, trades away the. The I think I think you trade and drop one of these tanks. If you don't drop one of these tanks, when are they getting played? <laughs> you know, to, just play one. You trade, you pop one down, next turn you can go for the Yamato. Concerned about this Stars and Stripes potential. Why not go for the Legions and then Type 93 frontline if you want to trade it? Type 93 into the frontline unit. Yeah, 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 trade into Elysians first. But look at that. Yeah. Good man. So, Artemisia having Stars and Stripes, I expect, right? Yeah, one copy of it. That's all you need. You don't need them to actually remove units. You just need your opponent to know that you have it. But Nora does not care. Going the risk here to lose all of the units. I admire it personally. You know, you gotta take risks. Goes for the move up. We could see yeah, the 15th Cav and the Yamato come down here. I think he risked to lose his most important card here, right? This first signal regiment. Yeah, I still it. Oh, go for the bombing raid. Yeah. Wow. Look Even at that. He wipes the board. Perfect. Yeah, the hand from Noru looks really scary with that Yamamoto yeah. and potentially five Japanese units on the board. That is 10 damage to face, potentially. I mean, one of them is a signal regiment, so I don't know how much dying it will be doing. Uh, if there's a Stars and Stripes yeah. coming out. Well, you can trade it into like a Kali in the front line as well. Which, yeah. talking of Kali in the front line. But I think, do you respond to the Kali by just jamming face with this fighter and then putting down the Yamato. You could even... Uh... Oh, it's difficult. Difficult decisions. Just goes Go for the Yamato. Yamato. Says, do it. Stars and stripes me. <laughs> <laughs> Feel the burn if you do. But look at this. Damage. This California is going to be huge. Look at that. Yeah, and it also sets up lethal in a way. Yeah. With the medical battalion, it can be 10 attack. Wait, so Nora... is that lethal? <laughs> I don't know how much setting up lethal it is. Ouch. Every unit that is dying now is 3 damage to the face. Yeah. Oh my god. Do you seven. drop the KR 83 or do you spam down a couple more units? I think I just go Mido into the California there. I don't think I dropped them. The Mido's got Blitz. Drop units that don't have Blitz, right? I don't know. Yes, yes. The, either the KI or the 22nd and the type. Yeah, KI 83 also not the worst choice here. There you go. That. 
Nuru sees the path. This also prevents both guards from being pushed up, which is actually quite important. Um, Ooh, that united we stand. Makes it possible yeah. that Key83 is getting traded out now. However, it's... it's just more burn damage. Yeah, it's one more additional damage to face. And we're getting uh... closer and closer to being able to kill our own Signal Regiment for Lethal. That would be insane if that would be the finisher of that game. Trading a Signal Regiment to the frontline unit for Lethal. Wow. I mean, look at this. There are four units in Noro's hand. One of them is a Mido, which is additional six damage now. And if the key 83 dies, it's seven damage. Artemisia really has to look for whether uh, we can do it or for the penicillin. But I think penicillin could be a little bit too far away here. Yeah, I doubt we're ever reaching penicillin. Buddy, he tries to go for it. Oh, the raining brigade, though. You can clear the whole board here now. And have a 35T in the front line if he wants yeah. to. Is he going for it? Should he go for it? What to keep it for? Medical battalion, not really. Ay ay ay. Wow, that was first. Yeah, wait. Oh, he wanted to be in the front line. He wants his unit to die. The it's units to die. He did go for the California. The possibility now of being able to heal up, or do you just go for nukes? I think you heal. I do 100% heal yeah. here, yeah. I think you, if you're Nuru here, you just keep pouring down the unit. I don't think you trade them away. I, I think you, you play around getting this um, Type 93, and then these trades become so much more efficient. I think you just spam the front line. Yeah, but then all of them have plus six health, right? You, I mean, you get don't get through them at this point anyways. Just don't drop this Type 94, whatever you do. Because then the Stars and Stripes will come out. Oh, oh, it's risky. Down to four, and there's a Mido. You can go for this penicillin. Yeah, 100% has to go for it. Otherwise, he's just dead with the yeah. Mido in. Two of two tanks in the support line there. Can penicillin and then continue to buff a guard as well. Look at that yeah, hand now. Doesn't go for the buff, goes for the front line instead. But actually that might still not be enough. But there's the thing. Paint retreat. Oh lord. No, we can do it. You can trade away two of your units, drop the Mito, pin or trade, and then play the feint. But look wait, how wait, this is growing. Good? Look how this. Oh, no, 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 this... this is lethal. Drop the Mito, trade, trade away your signal. Trade away the signal. Do it. I told you. Trade away the signal. Signal regiment, follow me. Do it. Please, please, please. No, don't miss this. Don't miss this, buddy. He's not seen it. He's not seeing it. Trade the signal. No, no, he's not seeing it. Oh, he's no, still he's doing it. it. Ah. No, Wait, what? Oh, one unit! Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, the lethal oh. miss! Oh god! Now he's sending his. And now it's being bounced! Oh shh! Needs a blitzer off the top! Now he's losing! He has to get a blitzer! He needs... Yeah, he needs 35T or something like that. 35T, anything with blitz! No oh blitz, my no Lord, win. The misplay. Or any order, right? Is there desperate measures still in deck? Oh God, what are we seeing here? But it's, it's, it's a blitz! It's a blitz! He can do it! Oh, oh. God. not being punished! Not oh being punished! Oh my Lord, I can't handle this. <laughs> my heart. 
Oh my oh, god. Oh, I damn. can't take Almost it. Almost through that game. Just imagine this not being a blitz unit. Almost hospitalized me. <laughs> oh, okay. It's late at China, so I think that that can happen. But oh my god. Almost through that. If this would not have been a blitz unit, then oh Artemisia would have won. Oh my god. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, I could have cooled off. Okay, the good thing is. Both Japan decks are out now, so we're not <laughs> seeing these Japan decks again. Uh, what do you bring here if you're Nuru? Do you go for the Germany or the USA Mirror? I think that US deck is not having that many good answers against a very aggressive German start. So I think I go with the with the German deck here for if I would be Nuru. I mean, I you feel can... like your your best answers right are the Bounce and the Hellcats. Yeah. And maybe if you go first and you get lucky, a Red Devils into the front line can buy you some time. But even with time buying, you need the Bounce and Hellcats to close out the uh, that advantage that the Hummer deck is going to get. Wow. Yeah, let's see. I think I would go with German if I would Noru. And Artemisia really has to find... Add. We don't want to see the mirror here, right? Because I think in the mirror, Artemisia is maybe having the advantage, just experience-wise. I don't know. I think you try to take a shot with German first, but then you have to win with US anyway. So I think it doesn't matter <laughs> too much. Hi, yeah, yeah. What are we seeing here? Dude, I'm just trying to breathe. So. Players taking a second before the next game, you know, I mean, if you can imagine how much that affected all of us, you know, in, in chat and, and on the stream. Imagine the player's point of view. I, I could not handle that. Especially if you maybe after the turn just figure out for yourself that you missed yep. lethal there. That is that is the worst feeling in the world. You always see it just afterwards as well. You always press that turn and yeah. then you notice what's happened. It's not just when you click. It's just when you release that mouse button. In yeah. that moment, you see... When oh, you let shit. go. There was a Yamato on that Sigler Regiment. I had four credits left. Oh, no. So, yeah, I expect we'll see Germany versus USA. But Nuru was picking the Japan deck, so I'm curious if they're trying to avoid this Germany deck for some reason. Um, you, you may say it doesn't matter. They have to win with both decks anyway, but it certainly matters. It 100% it matters because momentum is a huge part of card games. And, and your mindset is, is very much affected by momentum, right? You you feel good, you feel comfortable, you, you're more likely to make the right plays and the right decisions. So you want to, in, in this situation for Nuru, you want to pick your best deck, and then you can do the worst matchup afterwards when you feel better if you win the first one. Yeah, especially because being down 2-0 and then winning a match and it shows you, oh, I can beat this guy. I can win. It's not yep. that I don't have a chance against them. And yeah, just take that momentum, try to get 2-2 the two -two here, and then you have the momentum for for the final match there. You have the... you have, Just have it on your side, that the, the motivation, and you know, oh wow, I just came back after 2-0, and I can also win this series here. So circling back a little bit to earlier, talking about this yeah. balance patch since we have two as two usa decks here have you seen the usa italy combo idea yet with this new fit where you uh you play pattern and then you drop one unit and three of these and you can hit face for six on turn one. Oh it's, yeah it's now 1k and it gets that plus one attack and zero operation zero cost, op right? cost yeah yeah so you you can blitz out as many of them as you have and just look at Ollie's off, face. Look at Ollie's face. He's just, oh, I really have to talk with the devs about that <laughs> one. <laughs> did we see that combo being possible? But yeah, wow, I did not see that actually. It's just a very exciting thing to look forward to. It may not be competitive, but it will certainly be fun. Uh, and, and we see Nuru going with the, the Germany deck. Ah, as we expected. Okay. How many combined arm style cards do you keep? Do you keep think... just the henshaw or do you keep, yeah, just the henshaw? I think zero if you don't have Oof. a tank in hand, right? Oof. I think He's the fights is it. worth keeping, but look at this. Zero of them. Zero tank. 
Uh, and we do see this Red Devils as well for Artemisia. This is a very poor start. And the Hellcat and the United we stand top deck. Uh oh. Not the best start here for Nora. Oh, Another hand show. Worse. And you, just do you just hand drop a hand show? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like, what, what do you do? And the Plan West coming out. This is just a complete disaster. Absolutely. Oh. Parachute is not doing a lot. Not a single tank found until turn three here. Goes for the buff. That helps at least to get rid of the Red Devils. But if you're Artemisia, do you just trade away, kill the mobilized unit, take the pince effect off, move both units into the front line and play this how? And then I think you're in real trouble if you're Nero. You've got yeah. two free frees in the front line. Look at that. There comes the hill. The only out here that I can see off the, you know, in my mind is another of these pincers and fury trading. Yeah, he needs another second parasite yeah. to get rid of both, but. But now look, it's it just going to be free trades. And what do you take? I think, yeah, you take the 35T. Yeah, not a third handshell for sure. Yeah. There's another. Oh, unit. but United we stand. So, able to trade. Go for United we stand. Drop the power. And I'd like to see yet yeah, another trade wow. buffing up again. And look at this board a 6 3 and a 4 2. Really getting well, you out of that hell. Yeah. We're able to see some big buffs on a 35 T. However, no matter how big it gets, it will be killable by the Hellcat. And we do see research in Artemisia's hand as well, which is very powerful. And I mean, this how is going to give another proc, right? And there's another Hellcat. Yeah, smart play there. Keeping Goes the legions the alive, because this has hell on it. It's just growing and growing and growing. Yeah. So it's basically not taking any damage when trading into these one attack units. And it's <laughs> look at that attack. nine free. PRR also doing work there. And no more tanks for Nuru. <laughs> you ran out of tanks again with yeah, three I... more combined arms in hand. That's and most of the situation when I play this deck. Free. Like I, I, I don't find enough tanks to just shut my oh, opponent off. Looking really unfortunate, and, and Artemisia able to put a two turn clock down. But Noro takes the lead here. 19 <laughs> against 20 health <laughs> on the HQs. Oh, the Stars and Stripes as well. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean... And this looks like a, a like quick game. There's not any top deck that gets rid of that 9-3 there. Yeah, there is. Angel combined arms. Okay, maybe you can get rid of it. <laughs> <I think> <laughs> You cursed Artemisia. However, how can hand? Yeah, but also look at Artemisia's hand here. Yeah. How can plus the uh oh the weak oh. Wow, there's so yeah. many options. I can just go face with that. Yeah. No need to trade that handshell away and Oh, oh. the Blitzkrieg! Okay, this is this has been possibly like the, rip, the most unfortunate game today. But plays out the Blitzkriegs. I admire at least playing them, you know. Just for the XP that and you don't you get for friendly battles. Three one to Artemisia. Artemisia taking third place in the bronze match. Nero though, not going home empty handed, takes home two hundred dollars. Fourth um, place in his first tournament appearance. Yeah. Very impressive. And first six months of cards you know obviously artemisia came out on top but nuri still gets their fair amount of credit here i think and, and i think both players have played excellently um but i think that's the last of us today spooz yes. um sadly you know you you will be thrown back to less handsome less charismatic casters for the rest <laughs> of the day um but what can you do about it but anyway <laughs> i think do we have uh I believe it is Ollie and Crystal on standby, so back to them. Yep. Well, 
That uh, brings a tear to my eye. Thank you, uh, Bubbles, <coughs> for that. Yeah, Bubbles doing his, uh, his his best effort in not getting invited back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last you'll see of Bubbles ever at the yeah. Guys Open. <clears throat> Uh, we're gonna invite him, uh, you know, we're gonna call him up, be like, Bubbles, I really need you in Iceland, and then he's gonna be in the ocean. Correct. In the ocean. That's what you get for predicting all Brit bands. <laughs> Nonetheless, this matchup did see Brit band on both sides. Another heck of a, of a just back and forth. You know, we saw games go, aggro mirror matchups go to turn, I don't know, 12, and then you see a game end in four turns. It's just been wild to see the variety that we've experienced, despite the fact that everybody's lineup was borderline identical. Yep. Um, uh, very, very surprising um, for me. I mean, I, I was a little bit worried at the start of the day that we would just see kind of uh, the same matches over and over again, and mm -hmm. uh, everything would just get be, be very stompy, but... <laughs> I mean, I think we haven't seen a Jagro mirror matchup go like shorter than, you know, nine turns or whatever, which is uh, really far for those decks. <clears throat> and I mean, this series was was really cool. And I mean, game one, I mean, Noro put up a good fight, but I just, I felt like, you know, Yamato was a um, dead card in his hand. He didn't get a chance to play it. Um, even when he had, you know, four units on board, he could have played it, but then he was forced to go into trades just because of the pressure that was coming out of, um, out of Artemisia. And then, I feel like we've seen this a couple of times today. Um, as as great as Feint Retreat is, you know, once you once you get it out and you start reaping the benefits of it, it's great. But that whole turn it takes to play it once, that can sometimes be enough of a tempo loss. Like even though it's just for one turn, for you to lose that game. And I and I felt like that's kind of what happened to uh, Noro in that game number one. It, it kind of feels like a bit of a crutch. You you draw the card and you go, well, I need to get this out. I need to make this play. And like you said, Ollie, you just, that tempo you lose can be enough to put you a little bit behind the eight ball. And in these matchups where just about every one of the decks can be quick enough to punish you in scenarios yeah. like that, we, we've seen these players get punished quite a bit. Yeah, and then you go over to game uh, number two. I thought it was uh, really, really cool that he was holding on, that Nora was holding on to the Raiding Brigade, right? To, mm -hmm. to basically use it on a, on a better target, um, finding the Mitre Regiment with it. And I think the that double trade was was good. It gave him a chance to kind of uh, claw back into the game. But in the end, it just, it wasn't quite enough for him to to get that win. And all of a sudden, you know, in his first tournament, he finds himself with his back up against the wall. He's zero two down. Um, and that's where we, I believe, saw, you know, his best game, even though he made the massive, massive mistake of missing lethal, right? But I talked about it, it's like, it's in his first tournament. It's the game for his tournament life. It's late in China. He played Yamato like eight turns before, or five turns, or six turns, or however many turns before. And it it just it, it isn't intuitive for you to trade your signal regiment, uh, a zero four unit that costs four to operate, into a unit to kind of proc two damage, right? You just kind of forget. And I think that's what happened to him. He just he just forgot. But thankfully for him, he was able to find that Akita Regiment delivering exactly the damage that he needed. But um, And thankfully for us, Bubbles survived uh, that miniature heart attack that he got during the casting of that game. Um, and then game four, that was the story of not finding tanks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I want to open up the, the deck list here, but like, I'm pretty sure there's like at least 20 tanks in his deck. Um, and he just found practically none of them so so that was unfortunate um for him also he was going second so he had more cards not able to utilize that enigma at all and uh, eventually that just means that artemisia is able to clutch himself third place 250 dollars and noro impressive impressive run but uh, has to say goodbye to us in fourth place and to your point, you know, that's still a phenomenal appearance in your first real event to come in fourth, take home $200. Sure, there was a few little, little squeaks here and there, a few little maybe uh, possibly mistakes. But as, as you mentioned as well, Ollie, it's late. It's been a long day, a lot going on. Uh, and, and that's a play you make once in a blue moon. It's not something you even consider doing most of the time. So uh, those lines of play can sometimes be a bit challenging. And then, you know, you do run into unfortunate snares like in this game four, not drawing tanks. Uh, we saw like the last couple draws being Blitzkriegs that 
they yeah. couldn't really he, use either. It just, it, it does happen. You're just trying to minimize how often it happens to put yourself in a scenario where that unfortunately doesn't cost you your, uh, your tournament life. Exactly. And I just counted it out. Uh, he has 13 tanks in that deck, right? So, so theoretically one in four cards at least should have been tanks, but he had like eight cards in hand and none of them were tanks, right? Um, that this might also just be a signal, you know, maybe there's some tweaking to be made to that deck mm -hmm. uh, for him to kind of try and avoid those situations. Um, we, we do see slight variances. I mean, he's running the second Pharisees. Uh, not everyone is running as many copies of that. So uh, maybe a little bit of fine tuning on the tournament deck list side for Noral. And you also, I, I think it's also important to take a look at that and go, you know what? That was unfortunate that it happened in that game the way it did. But you know, Nor's been using this deck for a little while now. I think it's important to look at the grand scheme of things and say, hey, you know, one out of 10, it's going to happen. You just deal with it and maybe not to overreact and fine tune it. But I think I think you need to, to put a critical eye on that if you're going to continue to use this list uh, list going forward. So yep. enough of the, about the past. Let's talk about the future. We've got the grand final, Ollie. We're going to have $600 on the line for first place, 450 on the line for second place, Tang Tang Aramisia. You're gonna be casting this one with Darkness, so I'll send it off over to you two. Yeah, thank you for that, Christo. Uh, it is time for the grand finals. Um, and you know, just talking about the future, there is uh, so much fun <clears throat> stuff that is coming for cards in the future. Um, we, are, we are really, always trying to uh, do more and kind of ramp up um, the content that we are producing on all levels so uh, i've been i've been pastored multiple times but one of the one of the projects that we are working on uh features our very own bubbles um who is a little bit of a, an art nerd i don't know if you know uh but he is an art nerd in terms of carts uh he collects the the original artworks and he's done a lot of research into where this art uh that defines cards comes from so now we are actually working on at least a pilot that we are tentatively calling behind the brush where we explore the the backstories behind some of the iconic artworks that are found in cards and uh, so keep an eye out that in the coming weeks and if you enjoy that make sure to let us know so we know what type of content to produce for you in the future but darkness turning our attention here onto the grand finals between no in five and tang tang and we talked about it earlier in the broadcast this is effectively a clash of the chinese titans right now you know uh, I would say the only person we've been missing from this top four would be Huey Huey, and then we would have kind of the the golden four uh, players from China. But No. One Five and Tang Tang definitely having been the most active in recent months, having secured themselves open wins, having secured themselves uh, OCC wins. So, just from a pure skill perspective, we should be in for a treat here. What was the question? I, I didn't understand the last. There was no question. I was just okay. throwing it to you to talk more about how awesome these players are. Okay. Uh, yeah, both are very, very strong player. Like Tang Tang showed last week his skill set. Well, he, he lost against Ray Ray in the final, but the turn, bef uh, the, the months before, 9 5 secured himself the cards open win against myself in the final and the OCC win as well. So both player are on the run. Nine five a little bit more dominant through the last months. Tang Tang uh, a little bit like the runner up recently getting stronger and challenging Nine five uh, who was probably the strongest player at least the strongest chinese player during 2022 so yeah. i'm i'm really looking forward to this final because because not only everyone is bringing the same lineup uh, and it's now just down to the skill uh, i'm i'm looking at the bands right now and 95 decided to ban brit so he, he really knows the strengths of US Poland, but decided Brit is a little bit more more dangerous. And now it really comes down to 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 skill, to to game plan, and maybe at the end of top deck luck 
and we will see another Sheedon turn 11. Yeah, let's let's get into that. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm, I think it's interesting that he changes his ban from US over to Brit. Um, I think it's, uh, maybe he's banning the US deck earlier on in the tournament because he just felt like uh, Noro was better at that deck specifically, right? Um, of course, I mean, that was his, his his opponent there, right? So there may have been some level of kind of personal yep. familiarity um, that explained that. But we are just giving the players the <coughs> green light um, and waiting for them to start the first match of this best out of five grand finals because that is where we are at right now whoever wins this one will take home the cards open 11 championship title as well as 600 dollars and i know both of these players are truly truly fighting for this championship yeah like uh, uh what, what you mentioned knowing five was just banning the comfort deck of neuro if Bubbles is able to find out that Nero is his, his favorite nation is US and he played that most uh, yeah. most of the time, knowing five should should be aware of that. No, I mean it's not just his favorite nation. He is he is he's more than twice the levels in in US than in any any other nation, right? So, so the, I I have a feeling that you know there was definitely some level of familiarity there that that you know explains that ban. So, yeah. super interesting to kind of uh, get that context. But now, facing off against Tang Tang, he goes, all right, you know, now I'm facing off against a guy who's, who's been around the block for a while. Um, he's been in the tournament setting. Uh, I do not want him to have access to Brit Air. And I think that's interesting. I mean, why, why is it that, you know, in previous tournaments, when Brit Air has been prevalent, we haven't seen it banned as much, right? I, f I almost feel like in this kind of particular tournament with the decks that we're looking at, the Greyhound tends to be one of the biggest issues about that Brit US Brit Air deck. Well, looking at previous tournaments, there were often control decks targeting Brit Air. You know, like like German Italy controls stuff with a lot of sudden strikes, a lot of flamp panzers, but this is not working anymore against Brit Air. And um, aggro overall is so strong and dominant so you you can't really target it you still lose i tried and i lost in the final against nine five last month zero two three so no it's not about targeting it's about banning brit air yeah really really good opening hand here for tang tang uh finding the 32nd infantry so he's able to start getting those units out on the board but on top of that also having a stars and stripes in hand and i mean he is going up against us legions and us legions often tend to have a fairly full backline so having access to that stars and stripe at a critical moment could you know just immediately give tang tang the adva advantage in this matchup nine five is finding the second red devils they are not only able to trade two for one 32nd infantry regiment it's also horrible if they are able to get into the front line yeah because yeah the, the credit loss you you're receiving if you have to trade one or two times into those red devils it's just enorm and i, I believe knowing five will trade into the front line now and place one red devil there i wonder if he's sacrificing the damaged Red Devil into the front line to to send in one three Red Devil and yeah just put it there. Or if if he's like trading equally, having two Red Devils with one one stats. Oh, just using Unity Strength to to buff it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as soon as I saw him uh, pull out that Unity Strength because. Four six red devils is a dangerous red devils, but I mean this does open up the the Sherman drop here and the draw. If uh, Tang Tang so chooses, might not be the most optimal way. Maybe just push two units into the front line, play a plan west, start setting up for that Karis to come out, and start you know buffing up those legions. 
but this this at least puts it in, a, in an interesting situation. Um, opting to go for the Sherman, putting a 4-4 body on board, drawing two cards, finding the me medical battalion. Uh, I mean, of course, look at the fact he has two we can do its in hand. So if he's able to buff... Uh, a large number of units with a double we can do it and then establish a medical battalion, he could become really sticky on the board pretty quickly. Yeah, but also the Red Devil buffed. <laughs> and now the second Red Devil also looking to get buffed looks like a huge problem to me. Well, those Legion decks are fairly aggressive, but also more like mid-range decks they are throwing a lot more stuff onto the field and it's already it's already getting into like fortified position everyone is having a ton of of units of weapons and there is the red devil with four six stats entering the front line yeah it takes Tang -tang the entire needs turn. all of his credits to get rid of that yeah that's crazy the tax it is real. Just using we can do it. Uh, this will cause only the Sherman to survive. But 95 does has... He has another he unity. Has a unity. Look at oh that. God, that is a massive... Those are massive red devils. 9 attack, 11 HP, and it is going to cost... Oh my god, Underground oh my god. stayed off top! I was going to say, it's going to cost so many credits to deal with that, but turns out it's only going to cost 5. Wow. That was a game-changing top deck there from Tang Tang, and no one 5 yeah, acknowledging that. That top deck was brutal. Well, 9 5 sending the Red Devils into the front line and Tang Tang not dealing with it. 9 5 knew Tang Tang did not have uh, Underground State at his hand, but drawing it at as top deck, yeah, this was. This was the change Tang Tang needed. Yeah, and, and now I believe we are really much looking down a possibility where. Um, I mean, I think No. 5 has to basically push up as much as he can into the front line uh, as soon as he can so that he can block uh, Tang Tang from advancing with those high HP units and establishing a wider board to even buff again with We Can Do It. Oh, United he's, we stand. he's using Unity. Oh, this opens the field for Stars and Stripes. Yeah. It's and a huge Stars and Stripes. And that's what we talked about. And he has the credits to deal with the Red Devils as well. And all of a sudden, No Wins 5's board is empty. You would not have predicted that tur two turns ago when he had a 9-11 Red Devils in Tang Tang's face. But now his board is empty. Absolutely fantastic turns here for Tang Tang. On the other side, Ryan 5 is able to place a Red Devil into the front line, playing two times Western plan or maybe one time Western plan and then the Karras. A lot of things are possible here. 9-5 lost his board, but he has so many units and possibilities at hand. Yeah, and I mean, he, he still has plenty of stuff. He's got an underground state of his own. He's got two plan less. He's got a California. But look at just the, the size and power of the hand here for Tang Tang. And that medical battalion, it is going to do work. Yeah, it's not looking bad. Now, if No One 5 wants to deal with that 5-7 Sherman, he has to spend... No, he just top decked the Hellcat! He just top decked the Hellcat, indeed. Man, these top decks are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They are. It's a back and forth. Underground State is a possibility too. Buffing those legions able to get into the front line. And, and also blocking the draw. Yes, we'll overdraw. Section 2, the legions are 5-5 five, five now. 
He looks California, which means this hurts. It hurts a lot. And another we can do it coming out. Shouldn't he just drop maybe Red Devils before? I mean, you, you would kind of think so. And I feel like he needs to clear space in his hand. There we go. Red Devils come out. But that medical battalion, it, it is it is healing a lot. Well, the Red, Red Devils could have survived. Playing Red Devils and then we can do it. Yeah. Cost them to have six. Attack. And then the medical battalion would have healed it. Ordering matters is what we're learning here. Slight oversight there from Tank Tank could have been able to deliver two more damage um, to that 5-5 five, five in the front line, making it a 5-3 and a fully healthy board. But now the question is, if you are no in 5, are you trying to get rid of that med medical battalion or do you just not care? Because he has the Hellcat, he can move up the other legions, he has a California. He's plenty of ways to lock Tang Tang in the support line now. He's playing the underground state. And the section two. Now he's able to kill the medical battalion or just going face and into the front line. Yeah, threatens lethal there. I think now in five places perfectly. Okay, even though the threat of lethal is there, Tang Tang is able to clear the front line. He pushes the medical battalion up. Yeah, blocking the front line so the Hellcat is not able to, to threat lethal. But the Hellcat is now able to, to kill the medical battalion. Yes. No in hovering research, thinking. Maybe I want to be a scientist, you know. Maybe I want to figure out how to build yeah. nuclear weapons. This looks because... dangerous. Next turn, he's able to get two Manhattan projects, and the turn after, he's able to just nuke Tang Tang into the ground. Yeah. But does he have enough space to... To get those Manhattan projects. Yeah, he can just drop Hellcat or something. I mean, he, he's not going to be able to do it within next turn. He has to spend a turn clearing his hand before he generates the Manhattan project. He's going to overdraw next turn as well because of that section 2 that Karis gave him. Well, looking at the strategic bombing, I think I would have dropped the strategic bombing here. Now, I think we're about to see Tang Tang go for a massive unity of strength. Yeah. That's going to be a plus five, plus five, and he can put that onto the California. Or maybe killing the Karras. Hell. Or playing Hell. Now we see how Noen decides to tackle this. It's tough, you know, mainly because he's, his hand is so big. Well, Do you just... he went for the research. The, the logic way would be continuing that way. Like plan rest and then going for Manhattan projects, allowing you to deliver 12 damage next turn. The strategic bombing will clear all legions. And a top deck unity is strength. How much is this? Plus 5? Yeah. Plus 10? This, this, this is, is, this is lethal. Enough. 18 damage. 
Wow! That's from infantry units. That was 21 and killing all of the guards. Tank, yeah, tank. That, that's the power. That's the power of US Polish legions. With unity strength, it's so much damage. And with this little bit of AoE or underground state, you can basically remove all of the de possible defenses. Yeah, no, that was that was amazing. Um, an absolutely amazing game. And Tang Tang, even though he was under so much pressure, was, was able to, again, remain calm, find his ways to victory, and... But let's let's be real though. That underground state top deck changed the game. I mean, if if he has to deal with that massive red devils in the front line for any longer, he probably loses. But um finding the card that he needed at that moment, being able to swing that over into victory and no in five just one turn away from being able to use those nukes, running into issues because of hand size, really. And Tank Tank just making use of, hey, if you want to drop any amount of tempo against me to develop those nukes, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know hit you right back. Now now we are into J Acro against German combined arms, and Tank Tank sent back the first signal regiment into his deck. Well, he does have an amazing start. Bicycle regiments into Panzerbefehlswagen. Type 93, 22nd Infantry Regiment on top. So now, now he's able to drop the Type 93, kill the Humber with the Panzerbefehlswagen, and attack for 4 into the HQ, or maybe just for 2, and killing this little parachute unit. What would be the smart array, I believe. Yeah, he recognizes that as well. Yeah, do not allow the Panzer 35T coming coming in. Yeah, and I mean, when you go first in this situation, you really cannot give your opponent an opportunity to trade you two for one uh, right back, which is exactly what no one would have been able to do with that Panzer 2A. He would have been able to get rid of that bicycle regiment and you know, set up a favorable trade. And this can put Tang Tang into a really difficult situation because he has such few cards. Well, there's a form of card for the Dina and 22nd Infantry Regiment rating. Which so... one do you use here? Do you play the Dina or do you move up the Type 93 and drop the 22nd? You could even trade into the Greif and play the Type. Not a bad choice, I believe. Yeah. No, this is awkward for no mind five. <laughs> yeah, everything costs two and he only has three credits. Yeah, and this is why the killing the Greif would pro was probably a good idea. Well two uh, one four stats is just good. And Dina now is drawing more cards. He's able to get into the front line with Calvary Regiment, delivering another damage. Yeah. But this would allow now in five to trade two units with uh, this one <laughs> unit surviving. Tang Tang is playing around that. But how how much can you actually play around that? Because I mean, I feel like is he setting up to you know, have no one move up the second pair of C and then send dying it, or because I feel like I feel like you're almost better off having no one spend two credits on his turn, uh, tr like trying to trade into you, instead of no one potentially having the opportunity here to just walk up the second pair of C. Um, he can deploy he can deploy a Panzer thirty five T and he can he can buff him with the Henschel, right? So he has a big unit that's going to be blocking the the support line, no the the front line. I mean, I feel like this gave no in five more options because he has more space on the battlefield. But on the other side, Tang Tang would have lost a lot of options. And it, it's not wise 
I believe, to to just sacrifice your units for nothing. Another Sendai. Well, the Sendai Regiment is needed, definitely. But do you now go and you trade those uh, those parachute regiments from from the Brits? You don't want them to grow. Um, you can do that with the Dina without losing it. You could you could move the Dina into the front. Yeah. <clears throat> This would block the front line and stopping 9 5 from drawing cards with 22nd Infantry Regiment. Or just pinning this one. Yeah, both hands really, really small at this point. Blitzkrieg, not what 9 5 is looking for at all. 9 5 has two cards uh, depending on the front line. So they, they are not useful at all right now. Yeah, and, and this is one of the this is one of the problems with this uh, German aggro deck I have found is that once you get into this situation, um, especially since Tang Tang has another Sendai in hand, um, establishing your presence on the board and making it over into the front line becomes difficult. And there we see it again: a dead draw, combined arms. There's no platform to use it on. The only thing it can really do is use that second pair of C to go hit some stuff. But you can only trade one unit. And now it's just a matter of how much can Tang Tang lock him into the support line. And it seems like he could do it pretty much as long as he wants. Yeah, Tang Tang is just moving more stuff into the front line, even dropping the Rado. And no, Five has basically three dead cards. Yeah, I mean, he's threatening 10 damage a turn now. Humber. Well, he can drop the Humber, the infantry buffing this to 3 5. But there's another Sendai Regiment waiting. Exactly. I mean, Sendai and Desperate Measures. If, if, if Tang Tang you know, finds those, which he did this game, I think it's a really favorable matchup for him. And he just goes face. He says, I don't care. You can trade it out. I have a single regiment. You just keep taking damage. He doesn't even have to Sendai. And there Surrender. we go. No one. Just surrenders and Tang Tang leads two to zero here, having secured victory with his uh, combined no with his J Japan aggro and with his USA deck US uh, legions. And I would looks say, like, looks like the combined arms deck does has some weaknesses. Yeah, it's it's so... almost crazy that I would say it is probably the third weakest deck out of the deck lineups that are being brought. I don't think it is in ladder, but in a tournament setting, I think it's the third weakest deck that they brought today. The third weakest deck. Yeah, I think I think I think Japan Aggro and Brit Air are both better. And win against that combined arms deck um more than 50% of the time. So it's uh, the third best deck. The third best deck, sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the third weakest would mean the second best. The second best. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been an exciting day, darkness. So uh, apologies, right, but but yes. But I mean, uh, do you agree with me, or or like, am I am I saying crazy stuff? No, I I believe it's it's actually the weakest deck. It's not performing well against Jack, bro. Well, we're about to see because this is the only deck Tang Tang has left, and Noen Five has chosen to play U.S. Poland Legions into this. He knows exactly what deck he's about to face, and look at the starting hand. He has the thirty-second infantry. He's got the United We Stand for the early clear, and then he's already holding on to that underground state so that he is able to uh, send back whatever is buffed. And I believe that might even come out just uh, on turn three because of that United We Stand buffing him up. This is why I thought uh, this German deck could be the weakest deck. US Legion is very powerful, as you can see. Tang Tang does have a fairly strong start. 9 5 does, does too. Of course, it's not great to play US into a highly aggressive deck list. Oh. But so far, it's performing very well. Plan West 
the best possible top deck I believe no one has in his deck right there. Gives him two guard units, and he's able to develop another uh, 30 second infantry. Three units on board to start uh, answering that early aggression uh, and establish board from Tang Tang. Tang Tang is able to clear both legions with the Humber. And even trade into the, the 32nd Infantry Regiment if they want to. Yeah, I feel like you have to. Yeah, you want to protect the Humber. I'm getting traded. Just Another hundred regiment looks eight. looks strong. I mean, so him having another underground state just I would say makes him feel comfortable dealing with that Humber now with an underground state and not having to maybe drop a California or drop a Tarno and then take, you know, six damage to face. Or even more. Combined arms is very, very powerful. Yeah. If Tang Tang has a little infantry regiment and maybe two combined arms, this would be so Game. strong. And there is the combined arms, but the Humber is, is gone for now. Would you buff the Greif? Mm. I don't know. I, I almost like just playing the Flump Hunter here and taking out one of the 30 seconds. Um... You could play the Greif and trade the Henschel, like that. Yep. Clearing the board again. I mean, I, I like I like that play a lot. I like this play a lot. The Greif is very valuable because it's reducing the operation cost, and we saw today what yep. an Humber without operation cost can do. Well, but it's just dying against this California regiment. Yeah, and let's, let's also, you know, let's be aware of the intel mechanic in play, right? No one 5 knows that there's a Henschel. Yeah. Unfortunate for Tang Tang, he has no other unit types um, to really start proccing that properly. It's just a 2-2, two, two, plus 2, plus 2 at this point, but opts to go for it anyway. And, you know, no Greif means only three damage to face, not six. Um, that can be... And then an underground state, another one coming out. Or oh, United we stand and trade with California. It's just an underground state. All cards are known now. Yeah, and there we go. United Unity of Strength comes out. That is now four attacks that that California is able to absorb before anything passes it. No, he needs, he needs, yes, combined arms first, then trades a fighter. But maybe there's something better. Jaeger. Hmm. I think he has to play the, to choose the Jaeger regiment and drop the second Humber. I mean, with the Jaeger regiment, this is going to be uh, plus three, plus three. Right, so four six, but he doesn't have the credits to do that and attack with the Henschel and do the double tap with the Humber. So now in damage mitigation mode, Tang Tang. Yeah, preparing the second Humber. So next turn, there, there's a Jäger Regiment and combined arms. But a second we can do it on this board and guarding the... Yeah, Tang Tang just says, man. no way I'll ever be able to get through that and just straight up surrenders and no in five gets on the scoreboard here in the grand finals. He needs a reverse sweep if he is to claim back-to-back -back cards open wins. Will he be able to do it? Well... We talked about it. Potentially, this deck is the weakest out of the lineup, even though it's been getting some of the most attention in the game in recent days. But not working out for Tang Tang in that matchup, at least. Now, let's see. What does Noen want to bring into it now? He goes for the mirror. 
instead of going for the Jagro into it, he goes for the mirror. And that I, that I think is interesting because I think I think Jagro, if you're able to find the Desperate Measures and Sendai's, you can do a whole lot more about it. Whereas this, I feel like, is a little bit more of a coin flip by No. 5. Well, he has to win both decks anyway, so it doesn't make a big difference. I think it does. I think I think having momentum going into game number five, having won two games, especially once we when we know that it's 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 late at night um, for them, right? Um, just having the adrenaline versus versus going into this like, man, I lost the past two games. I'm getting frustrated. I feel like that can affect you way more um, if you're playing this. But no, no, and five has to win with both. He has to win now if it, if this is going to be game number five. And if you're going into game number five with like the deck advantage, that's true. This will boost your confidence and will put so much pressure on Tang Tang. That is true as well. Ooh, no Jaeger regiment. Uh, Jaeger regiment here would have been absolute disaster for No and Five. Tang Tang develops board. That play, I I do too. He's 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 basically setting up for the early aggression from No and Five, saying, "Yeah, buff that Humber, bring it here. I dare you." I wonder if he would have been better off pincering the Panzer Two A, because then he could have blitzed across the field and dealt with that Humber now. But this would have caused No and Five to. One around the field and kill the one one little mobilization unit. Essentially, yeah. Like this, he can't touch him, and it's just growing. So there are pros and cons. Just playing the Humber and sending the three three infantry into the front as well. Oh no, he's just using combined arms, right? Maybe to to secure the mobilization units another turn. <clears throat> but hmm, what are you doing here if you are no in five? I mean, wait, combined arms doesn't make any sense, right? He's just gonna die if he attacks into the second Pharisee. -E. No, he, he's using the buff and trading the other units, oh, creating yeah, a yeah, big yeah. camber, causing causing problems. I didn't see that. And now Jaeger delivers six. Just enables so much mobility across the field. And yes, Noen has the big Humber. And we saw him win a game by developing a big Humber in the early stages of this tournament. But is it going to be enough this time around? Potentially. He's trading two big units. Probably the Humber and the 4-4. Four -four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he does not have the credits required to trade anything else, but Tang Tang's hand is empty. Is Tang Tang running? Uh... Let me check. Enigmas? Let me see. No, no enigma. No, no enigmas so for Tang Tang. Tang. He he's just dropping two tanks. Okay. Let's click. How much is that damage? Enough? Is that? Plus six. No, it's just eleven. It's just 11, yeah. But yeah, yeah, quote unquote, it's 11 just 11. Damage. And without a frontline, Blitzkrieg is nothing. He, he, could, he could even kill the Humber. I think it's smarter. Yeah. But what is the top? Another Panzer 35T. That's, that's looking awful, actually. This is. He can because take... he has no infantry on, on the field. No. He needs the Panzer 35T and both Panzer 2As to just kill his mobilization units and he and he has to kill it. Yeah, he can he can drop the, the 22nd infantry, a Panzer 35T, and then trade away the 4-4. The four four. He's gonna take two damage next turn, but he's gonna have an established infantry unit and another Panzer 35T to follow that up. He he's he also holding draw. Five he would take five damage then. And Tang Tang is running um 
Panzer 35Ts and Comet and Blitzkrieg. This move is crazy. Ah, he, he's attacking into it, so it's... Oh it's my protecting. god! Oh my god, that is one damage away. Yeah. 95 played played around exactly that move. Wow. The Henschel. This this could be enough for No. 5 to wrestle back control of the front line and Tang Tang with no enigma or no way to refill his hand could just be one damage short of securing himself the Cards Open 11 championship. No. 5 really rolling the dice. But I mean why would you leave the 4-4 four, four alive when you could have traded that out and left the 2-1 alive? That's that's what I don't get. To, to leave that alive. Uh, to to play, to get more units on the field, like yeah, like okay. a desperate measure, sending everything in, Banzai. <laughs> Move like that. Well, now he's buffing his unit, able to send... At least something into the front. I mean, now he's thinking, is there any card in the deck that Tang Tang can draw right now that is able to get through this unit and into the front line in the same turn? The answer is no. Second pair of C. Not going to be enough to help him. Has to deploy that dry. No in five sitting on one HP on his HQ, but has all the power right now. He is able to second pair of C the Henschel, trade out the enemy second pair of C, and then have three units established in the front line and he might have just wrestled control back in the nick of time to keep himself alive in the tournament and a blitzkrieg in hand that is going to seal the fate of tank tank next turn not finding comet top deck <laughs> no comet top deck blitzkrieg no in five stays alive and we're going to game number five darkness Yes, we are. Game number five it is, and it's German Combined Arms against J. Agro. Wow, this series is crazy. And Tang Tang must be fuming right now. He was so close. He was one damage away. This is a really exciting tournament so far. No, it's been crazy. I thought all these matches would just be like a one-sided blowout, but they've all been pretty much, apart from one game, all of today have been back and forth slugfests with low HQ HP on one side, clawing it back into the game, wrestling control and securing victory. And now let's see how the Mulligan look like because that is going to be crucial for No. 5. I mean, he's already found the 15th Cav so that he's able to put on that early pressure. Um, he has... A Type 94, so he has some pin. Tang Tang already uh, sent back all of his mulligan cards, and he ended up with the Parachute, Hammer, Combined Arms, and the Henschel. Really important card draw, I feel, uh, for him. No N5 still thinking about it. Looking looking really great with the Calvary Regiment and uh, Panzer 35T Akita. Well, of course, going first changes especially in the aggro mirror matchup tank tank just deployed two units and this is the strength of the zero credit infantry with mobilization how's nine five going to react against it is he going for a rado maybe finding desperate measures just using the cavalry regiment to block the front line or to to slowly raid and use the type I wonder if, you know, if No. 5 drops the Arado to find the Desperate Measures and he starts trying to play that on the next turn, it's not going to be enough to deal with that Humber because that Humber is going to be buffed next turn. And it's it's way too bad. No. 5 is going second. If he's going to get rid of another credit slot, he's too behind Tank Tank. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's and, and he's bad. he's kind of hoping... I, I, I kind of like not pushing the 15th cab up here. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. 
basically trying to bait out uh, a trade from that Humber and setting up a zero op cost Panzer 35T because the tempo here is so important. Tang Tang can't, would like to drop the Heinkill, play combined arms on Humber and go into the front line, but the, all of that is not possible in one turn. So he has, uh, they have to wait. And just dropping the 22nd Infantry Regiment seems like a good way of rating. He forces 95 now to react and do something to get into the front line and block it. And this yeah. is where. Uh, the, the mobilization unit kicks in. It will be 3-3 able to trade a cavalry regiment. Yep. And I think I think no in 5 finding the second type 94 is becoming more and more important because he, or a Sendai, right? He needs a way to deal with that first buffed Humber. And if he can, again, Tang Tang not having Enigma might come back to bite him in the butt here because he has two cards left. Sure, he has a lot of power on the board, but no one five has so many cards and options. He trades out yeah, the Yeah, no five knows he's targeting the card draw. 22nd infantry regiment. Really smart. Jaeger regiment. I mean, this sets it up for you know a good trade. It's, it's um, just strong. Jaeger Regiment, trade, going into the front line with Spose, attacking. Tang Tang is on on uh, on the peak right now. Peak power, turn three. What kind of checklist? But Sendai. it's Sendai enough. No, I having mean, access yet, to but, it. And he can't even play it yet. It's it's turn three. Three credits. He can, can only use it the next turn. Sure, but just having the ability because if Tang Tang this turn does something crazy like Henkels and combined arms or whatever, right? That Sendai is able to m mitigate all of that. Yeah, Tang Tang needs to, to kill the Arado and Heinkel kills the tank, get some card draw, and that's going to be that's surely is going to be a desperate measures turn next turn here. But even Desperate Measures and Calvary Regiment is only killing three out of four units. Yeah. Sure, it's the best way of dealing with this situation. But Noyan 5 can't really use the credits efficiently, floating one credit. And he destroyed another credit turn. And there's a Humber. Yeah, but he blocked the Hankel. Hankel and a 22nd infantry are now gone from the deck from tank tank he almost has no draw mechanics left he is no one five is banking on basically um emptying out tank tank's hand surviving it putting him into a top deck game and then winning that top deck game and i think as a strategy for no one five here that is a pretty good strategy because with the with the start that tank tank had no one five didn't have a chance to go blow for blow with him yeah, the strategy is good. I agree, especially since he has two Architas regiments and one Sendai. This is a lot of stuff to yeah, to deal with with Tang Tang. The Akita regiment able to clear the front line, hitting the Humber as well. Okay. I mean in this is gonna be two plus two. It's it's a lot of damage. It is a lot of damage. So much damage. Sendai Regiment is able to get rid of it, but there is a Panzer 35T. Yeah, it's not enough. This is going to be game. Tang Tang is going to have this because Sendai is going to take this away, but then the Heinkel plus Panzer 35T is just going to be enough. And the double buff was enough. Tang Tang arguably probably jumping up and down in his seat at this point finding exactly the damage he needs and he was he was just one turn away from being put into the top deck game which would have probably led to no end finding the victory in the absence of a of a of a comet top deck but no in five so painfully close to completing the reverse sweep but tank tang he is our cards open 11 champion
Congratulations. It was amazing. It was an amazing tournament. Although everyone had like the same decks, the same lineup. Uh, I never expected this to be that close and entertaining. No, I mean, I almost want to go like, hey, can we do another tournament right now where everybody just plays these decks, right? Because, you know, these these matches were explosive. They were entertaining. They were back and forth. And there we see it. Those are our final results. Tang Tang comes in first. He is our Cards Open champion. He robs No One Five, who was painfully close to completing the the reverse sweep and defending his title from Cards Open number ten. And then you have <coughs> Artemisia taking third place and Noro, the newcomer, taking fourth. Uh, what a fantastic day of matches and uh, what a great tournament broadcast this has been. Wow. Um, huge congratulations to everyone that made it into the top 16. Congratulations to the players who made it into the top four. And congratulations on Tang Tang, who, you know, wasn't able to... Uh, wasn't able to follow up his season win with an OCC win, but he claws it right back and gets the cards open. Yeah, this was this was a great demonstration of the power of the Chinese player who are who are really into the game and really putting the time and the effort into it. Not only knowing five is like in constant and challenging J King as one being being called as a, the best or one of the best cards player in cards esport uh more more coming more oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah i mean i i i am just i am so excited i mean we're getting these tournaments uh now and and i i feel like i feel like once we once we're seeing mobile as well i mean so much of the the ccg gaming market has transitioned over into mobile right so we're still playing on the small field of games so to speak and once we go there i'm just thinking about all the future talent that is about to come into the game and what they are able to do with the tools that these players have maybe not figured out yet or if these players are just absolute gods and will show everyone that cards players are in fact the most talented players in the ccg space that is what i am looking forward to uh, but Darkness, any last words before we throw it back over to myself and Christo to sign things off? I'm just really waiting for Cards Mobile to appear. <laughs> this is this is my uh yeah, my 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 favorite thing for lookout in the summer. Can't wait. Well, I have it on my phone right now and I'm testing it and I can tell you it is great. So let's throw it back to myself and Christo to wrap things up. Sitting by the pool with Cards Mobile open on my phone. Now that is a dream I cannot wait for. Yeah. Well, no, definitely. <laughs> definitely. What, a, what a series that was. You know, all you were talking about momentum. And I thought with Tang Tang coming one point of damage away in that game four to No in five, coming back and having the opportunity to push and, and almost make their game plan work in game five as well. I thought that was for sure going the other direction. So big props to Tang Tang for pulling that off. Um, I mean, massive props. Um, if, if we just if we just look at it, um, if, if we look at the situation that was happening in that final game, and, and you could see it. You could see that it, it was no in strategy. He was going to target the draw. He said, "I'm, I'm going to I'm going to make you lose all your draw mechanics." Yeah. And then the only thing that was left to help him draw was dependent on him holding the front line. And it came it came painfully close to working. And this was literally a matter of you know if that Panzer 35T is a Panzer 2A, I think No and Five wins that game. You know, I, the the only final hope for tang tang was finding that comet top deck which would have been extremely difficult for no one to deal with but just the amount of tempo that no one would have probably been able to follow up with would have put him in a great spot to clutch that victory but absolutely uh fantastic play from tang tang all throughout today um he played uh, uh fantastic um, i would say not a ton of mistakes uh same thing for no one not a ton of mistakes but sometimes you know your matchups are just a little bit favored in either way but big takeaway from me this from this day is that humber deck combined arms deck is 
very shock and awe, right? Like mm -hmm. you kind of you kind of get taken aback when you see like a massive fury unit just plowing down your HQ, but maybe not, you know, without its counters. Maybe the meta can really quickly shift to, you know, sneak in some ways to deal with those few buffed units and all of a sudden we see this uh this deck list kind of tumble down in popularity so very very interesting day of uh competitive play here today and i think i had mentioned it before as well you know it comes down to consistency really uh, on its best day sure it can be a phenomenal deck and it can take you out very quickly with those buffed units but is it doing it every game is it not what are the the um you know, ways that you can be stopped. And is that something that's popular on ladder, popular in the tournament meta right now? So it can absolutely go in both directions. But for me today, my biggest takeaway is it's just not judging a book by its cover. I think that we got together for the war room. We stared at those lineups. We stared at those deck lists. We couldn't even tell them apart. And we were a little bit concerned that um, this event might be uh, kind of similar. Uh, but, it, you know, we were absolutely blown away. I think this is some of the most exciting cards gameplay I've seen in a little while. And this is just the cards open. We got the OCC yeah. coming up in a couple weeks. We had one last week. Like, this just bodes so well, like you said, Ollie, for the future of cards, esports, more players involved. These opens are going to get bigger, some regional events, all kinds of great things are coming. And all it's going to do is increase the level of gameplay we're seeing. Yeah, and I mean, I'll, I'll say at least for for my part, I'll I'll take uh, this meta over resistance meta uh, any day, right? <laughs> I mean, like I'll 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 have I'll have more fun, um, you know, making everybody feel like I'm an idiot by miscalling different things in a super fast paced aggro meta than than miscalculating fatigue damage. Uh, so um, it, either way, I miss do something, but uh, I, I have a lot of fun seeing those slugfests. Absolutely. And it's it's unfortunate that the audience can't see you at your desk when you're calling these matchups because we get the little preview, right? So just seeing you standing up, screaming into your microphone, um, it's it is absolutely a scene to <laughs> behold. And and that's the kind of excitement I love to see from CCG esports because a lot of times you get that, oh, it's just it's just a card game. There's they're moving a card forward. But at the end of the day, there's just as much excitement in this genre of games as there is in anything else. Uh, it's all about bringing that passion to the table. So, Ollie, I love the way you're calling these <laughs> I'm just, I'm happy that we get to do these events on weekends, so I'm not disturbing everyone in the office. Because I've been like, I've been yelling all day long. Whenever something exciting happens on stream, you bet your panties that I'm jumping up in my seat, up and down, and and you know, screaming at the at the computer screen. Even though nobody can hear me, um, this is just for me. For me, all esports and uh, are, are just a game of emotions, right? Yeah. I mean. It, once you reach a certain level, you expect everyone to be able to perform, right? Like it, it doesn't become a game of mechanics. It doesn't become a game. It becomes a game of, of mental strength uh, and emotions. So for me, I think cards is no exception. And if, if I can get this hyped, I can I can only assume that the people at home are also hyped. And uh, yeah, bright future ahead. Absolutely right on all in. Like you said, you know, it comes down to a game of, of inches. It is absolutely skill when people are bringing the same deck list. They're bringing, they've got all the same tools. They have the same understanding of the game. So it's just those little things. And that's what brings all of the excitement. Once again, congratulations, Tang Tang. Taken home first place, winning the grand finals and a $600 USD prize. No one coming in second. We had Artemisia in third and Noru making their first appearance in the cards open. Coming in fourth, phenomenal day had by all. You can take a quick look at the bracket there with all of those details. Any uh, final words, Ollie, before we sign off? Um, no, not really. I would say just, um, you know, everybody that is watching, if you haven't already, make sure to follow us here on Twitch or if you're watching on YouTube to follow us there. Um, I would recommend being on Twitch because that's where we're doing most of the giveaways, but just make sure to give us a follow so that you don't miss out on anything that is upcoming. Um, Spoo's mentioned, you know, we're working on new uh, player uh, videos, uh, basically to help you beef up your starter deck and uh, start making a run at that field marshal. We really hope that that will help some of the newer players that are coming in uh, find their footing in the game we're also working on uh, other content initiatives um, so 
we're really looking to kind of make cards presence felt uh, more widely on the internet um and that could be a hard nut to crack but um we are definitely working hard at it um behind the brush uh, exploring the artwork and the history uh behind the artwork and cards all of these things are coming your way as are of course more tournaments with occs and cards opens and then as we move ever ever closer to that uh, to the that biggest tournament of them all the world championships uh they're going to be held in iceland at the end of the year as we did last year and i am beyond excited to see how that will all play out so make sure to keep your ears to the ground when it comes to cards esports and content because there's always something happening so much going on i'm so excited to see this all play out once again congratulations tang tang for taking it all home and a huge thank you to all of you for tuning in from darkness bubbles spooze ollie and myself and mark theus behind the scenes pressing all the buttons making us look good thank you for tuning in to cards open 11.